morning, everyone. Oh, let me hit this screen first. I don't want to give away everything right now because we've got some special guests. I want to talk to you about something this morning, and I know you're excited as much as me. The Nikon Z8, there's no doubt we are getting, it is confirmed, we're getting an announcement of the Nikon Z8. Or Z8 if you're in the United States. I'm super excited by this for the first hour leading up to the announcement. And once the announcement happens, we're going to go live. I've got a screen. We're going to cover it live, give, it, give you our thoughts, and then do a post-game analysis. But I want to introduce you to my panel here. And these are the gentlemen that are going to be with us this morning. And I have Chuck from AP Studios. Chuck, good morning. How are you, my friend? Good morning. And good morning to everybody in the chat. Uh, doing fine. Ready for this announcement, Simon. And, and Chuck, why are you excited about this announcement? Why are you here this morning with me? Well, you know, I, I've followed this. Well, I, I shouldn't say I followed. I kind of started this whole narrative uh, 18 months ago with the Z8 prediction, and uh, I want to see it come to fruition. I want a second body. I'm a Z9 owner, and I want a body that's ergonomically the same as my Z9 so I can carry two cameras without having to figure out where the controls are. Now, Chuck, I, I got to admit, I, I think you came up with this idea of what the Z8 would be before me, but I didn't realize you had done it. And apparently we had the same idea of what we thought the Nikon Z9 or Z8 would be, didn't we? Or don't yeah, we? I, I think we were very close at the time. As a matter of fact, I talked to you about it and, and I understand you said, well, let's wait and see. Let's, let's give it some time to ferment before we begin speaking about it. But yeah. Yeah, absolutely, Simon. I think you were spot on with your prediction or your assessment of what Nikon should do. And that's where I started from to come up with this idea of what the Z8 would be. And we'll get into that very shortly. But the one of the reasons I have you here is if I'm wrong, I've got company, right? We've got the same sort of viewpoint on this. Absolutely. And I have said all along, if I'm wrong, I will absolutely admit it and apologize for being wrong. You know what? I agree. I'm I'm not always wrong or I'm <laughs> See, guys, I have my coffee here. I, I'm normally up at six, but I'm not normally doing live streams. I'm usually doing pieces, and if I get something wrong, I just back up and go over it. But what I was trying to say, it's a, it's a kind of a quote of mine is, I'm never, I'm not always right, but I'm never wrong, except for that time in 1978. All right, I would like to introduce Kevin. Kevin, how are you this morning, sir? I am doing really good. How about yourself? As, as you probably just heard me rambling inarticulately, I'm a little bit, um, I'm trying to rev up. I'm trying to get started. Trying to rev up. Yep, I hear you. I hear you. But I see with, we've already got 234 people in the, in the stream, so I can tell that everyone's excited. And, you know, I want to introduce the audience, too. We've got a lot of people here. We've got James from Newfoundland um, on the east coast of Canada. So it's good to have you here. We've got virus from Poland. We've got people from Germany. We've got the Art of Women Photography at 7 p.m. in Australia. This is truly a wow. worldwide audience. Yep. And, oh, my goodness. Uh, somebody's already offered up um, a super chat. I you know, I haven't even finished the introductions yet. Thank you so much. Very much appreciated. Um, hello, everyone. Let's see what Nikon brings to the table. Good vibes. Chuck. So here's a question for you, Chuck, right away before we finish the introductions. Uh, Chuck, will you finally get your Z8? Your ranting will be heard at last. So Chuck, why don't you go ahead and take that. And guys, uh, when we do get Super Chats, I do like to prioritize them. You don't have to do it, it's, but it's very much appreciated. Thank you so much. Yeah. Um, will the rants be over? Um, you know, I, I, I've talked about this quite a bit. I'm not a fanboy of Nikon. I love Nikon, I use Nikon, but they can do wrong. So will the rants be over? Will the Z8, uh, no matter what it is, yes, the rants will be over. But uh, with distributing the products and <laughs> maybe uh, outlook for further products or further camera bodies, I don't know that the rants will be over. And I hope that people understand, I want the brand to do well uh, not to be number one, but to continue to do well so that we push all the other uh, camera makers out there and they do so to Nikon. So I'm going to advocate, be an advocate for, you know, what I think they should be doing. And I'm no expert, but I listen to everybody else's chat to determine what I think Nikon should do as well. So I, I just become a voice for some people that don't have a platform to actually speak and so, yeah, the rants may continue, but not the same rants. And, guys, keep in mind that if you disagree with his rants, you're more than welcome 
to show up on his Wednesday and Saturday live streams where you can rant with him. So uh, that's always an open invite, and he always says so on his live streams. All right, we didn't finish the introductions with Kevin. So, Kevin, what kind of work do you do, and why are you interested in this camera? What what has it? What's got you interested? Um, yeah, no problem. Um, my name is Kevin Nordstrom, and I am a nature and wildlife photographer uh, based out of Ohio along Lake Erie. Uh, and I just mainly shoot uh, waterfowl and eagles and hawks. And uh, and my main I, I shoot Canon, uh, not that there's anything wrong with any of the, any camera brand. Uh, and I currently shoot the Canon uh, R7 with the 100 R, RF 100 to 500 uh, and the Sigma 150 to 600. Uh, and I'm really interested to see Nikon kind of just um, up their game and just kind of, you know, finally uh, bring to the table what, what so many Nikon shooters have been waiting for for a long time and uh, just really... Yeah, uh, just stir up that uh, that excitement again uh, in photography as a as a general whole uh, to really bring everybody into the community together to really just to get excited again uh, to take photographs. Wonderful. And uh, the last guest so far, uh, the day is still early. I have James from James Jackson Films, and uh, I always love having James on the channel because this is called the Ordinary Filmmaker. Not because I produce films as Steven Spielberg would do, but because, like you, I'm just an ordinary person. I'm, there's nothing special about me. I have a family, and ever since I got married, I started documenting through film, through video, and producing my own personal montages of life, very personal films. And I do this for others as well. So when I say ordinary filmmaker, I mean that's each and every one of us as we pick up a camera or our smartphone and start documenting our lives. So James, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. Morning, uh, Simon. Thank you for having me here. Uh, that was actually a wonderful introduction, a really well introduction, man. Um, so yeah, I'm. Uh, my name is James Jackson. I am a filmmaker out in... Uh, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania in the US. I do commercial, I do commercial and corporate videos, but I've also do some sh narrative shorts as well. But uh, on the YouTube world, I'm known as James Jackson Films. I own a YouTube channel where I discuss uh, cameras and gears, you know, guys, I'm still a techie at heart. Uh, but I also look to do to give insights and also give some tips on filmmaking gear where it comes to like lighting when it comes to uh color grading and other and how to work with your video cameras so i do a lot of uh content like that on my youtube channel and if that's something you're interested in, definitely check that out uh, i would be happy to have anybody there and i'm uh i'm here simon brought me on because i'm interested to see in terms of a filmmaker what not how nikon is going to stack against the competition yeah, and specifically um, the Canon EOS R5. So I think to both me and Chuck, it's certainly no surprise that uh, what Nikon's looking at here is the R5, more so than the Sony a7R5, especially if the rumors are correct. And this is a cue to go to our next screen here. So let me just switch back over here, and let's take a look. Uh, Nikon rumors did a really great job of putting these side by side. You have no idea how much effort it takes to actually uh, do this uh, to to put this together but if, if the Z8 does have the exact same sensor well that's the same resolution as the R5 it means a lot of the same video capabilities can be there and so we got the R5 we got the Z9 and it gives us an idea of where this camera is aimed at so I'm really curious to know what James thinks from a, um, a filmmaking point of view because you know he's got a lot of experience and I certainly myself I shoot with the R5 an awful lot I'm shooting with it now and I really do appreciate its um, video capabilities, but I do have to make one slight apology. It is currently seven o'clock here in the greater Toronto area. My wife is about to wake up, as is my son, and at nine o'clock they will get out the door and it'll be time for school and it'll be quiet again. I'm using a Sennheiser profile mic because I think it sounds pretty good, but it does a pretty good job of blocking background noise. You'll still hear things but it won't be annoying, and I'll mute myself when I'm not talking, so please bear with me. If you hear some weird things in the background, it's like, what was that? 
Um, that's my family waking up. So, all right. So let's take a look at these specs. Because what I want to do is I want to take a look at the latest specifications. I want to ask each of us what we think Nikon is going to do with this. And I'm going to tell you right now that I think that the Z8 is going to be aimed squarely at the Canon EOS R5 while taking note of the Sony A7 R5. But I believe, I believe that Nikon is going to take it a notch above. They're going to aim for what Canon's going to do with their successor because, well, they know Canon's. Regardless of the rumors, they know at three years, the R5 Mark II is going to be coming out within about a year at the very latest. So here we have the specs. Um, Chuck, so what I'm seeing here is 45.7 megapixels stacked. What do you think? Do you think we're going to get a stacked sensor in the Z8, or do you think these are just um, hogwash? No, I uh, I definitely believe it's going to be stacked. I've thought that all along. I mean, I go back to just using logic. Nikon already had all this hardware ready to go. It's already been proven. Uh, it was just a matter of tweaking and putting it in a different body because that's what everybody was asking for when the Z9 came out. So many people wanted the same functions. I mean, doesn't everybody want the same functions mm -hmm. as, a, as a flagship camera? But they wanted that camera in a smaller body, slightly smaller, not tiny, but slightly smaller body, and at a better price point. And I think that's exactly what Nikon did. And if so, if we see that in the announcement, I mean, that that's a big coup for Nikon uh, consumers. But it also, and I'm not going to go there, but I have to also mention this, it also leads us to believe that there's got to be something that's going to come in even bigger as a flagship. So you know, that'll be the next topic and everybody's going to hate me for that too. But anyway, yes, I do believe it's going to, it's going to follow the same format as the Z9, just in a smaller body. I, I've said this for a couple of years now. Um, and when the R5 came out without a stack sensor, people said it was going to fail. It was going to be useless. Um, it's terrible. The rolling shutter is terrible. James, what are your thoughts on this camera having a stack sensor or not? And would it be able to sell if it doesn't have a stack sensor? Of course, it will sell without a stack sensor. Why? I mean, and because at the end of the day, it's still a photography first centric camera. And that's sort of the thing with me. It's like and Canon has already proven multiple times that you don't need a stack sensor. Panasonic has proven you don't need a stack sensor. And their products are, are selling at volumes. I think we just sort of take a look at, I think we just got used to Sony because Sony is, is the highest, is, ha takes most of the shares in terms of sales, but the other camera manufacturers have done really well without having a stack sensor. Um, but from a film, I would say, so it, I think it will still do well. I think a lot of people will be disappointed, but at the end of the day, it's, it's just how you use the camera. Um, and at the end of the day, it's still, as well as there's a lot of great video features, at least from, I'm reading from the specs, it still looks like it's still a photo first camera more so than a video or uh, video oriented camera well kevin l let me ask you then as somebody who does a lot of wildlife does a lot of photography and i'm actually going to take us to the the next point here the iso range now at first it the iso range doesn't seem all that impressive it doesn't seem you know it's not pushing an iso of 1.6 million as we've seen in some rumored specs for cameras that are due to come out what do you think of this iso range um, I think that it would still be okay for wildlife, honestly. Uh, I think whether it's a hybrid camera or not, if it's a, just a photo centric camera or not, um, you know, it, we, a lot of the things that when the Canon R7 came out, it, everybody was kind of bashing that a little bit saying that it's not going to be do, you know, decent in low light being a crop sensor. And, uh, it, it's not exactly up to par as the R5 obviously, or the R6, but it's pretty good. And I think that obviously that's comparing apples to oranges, but I'm just saying that I, I think that it, people are still going to take the camera. It's still going to sell just like, you know, everybody was saying is it's still going to sell. Well, uh, I think it's going to be a stack sensor. Uh, and I think that hopefully it'll be under the $4,000 range that everybody is thinking and, and, uh, kind of, uh, judging by, but, um, I, I think for wildlife, I mean, just about any kind of camera will do as long as it's got more than four or five for, uh, frames per second. But, um, I, I think it'll do well and I think it'll sell. And, uh, I think there's going to be some people that are irritated that aren't happy. And, uh, I think they're going to have to just get over that and, uh, hopefully just keep, uh, using what they're using until, uh, they find something that works for them. 
No, I certainly agree. And one other thing too, guys, um, you might notice that to set a chat, you have to subscribe. And, and if that bothers you, you don't want to do that. Well, you can always unsubscribe later. But I want to first of all, thank everybody who has subscribed over the last week. Uh, the response has been incredible. I started this channel just about three and a half years ago, and I can't believe I'm at 40,000. Well, sorry, I'm, I'm speaking ahead of myself. I'm just about 100 subscribers away from that 40,000 mark. And, you know, I haven't hit that 40 mark yet, um, but I, 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 you know, I'm immersely um, honored that, um, you know, I've been able to produce content enough that 40,000 people have said, yes, I'm going to subscribe. So if you want to comment, you go ahead and subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Um, then you can comment. There's, there's a five second delay just because I knew we'd have a lot of people. We've got over 400 people watching and it also prevents those that are trying to spam because there are bots that do come here and they try to spam us. I want to introduce our fourth guest here, Wayne. Um, tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from, what kind of stuff you shoot. Ah, Wayne Maddox. I'm currently doing YouTube, retired from IT. Did uh, IT in a corporate world for about 25 years, decided I wanted to travel and figure out where in the world I want to live. I'm currently in Thailand at the moment, but as you guys know, I've been there for a while. I've been hanging out between here, Kuala Lumpur, Hong Kong, basically most of the countries in Southeast Asia. Video is my thing now. I shot in Icon for almost 20 years. And last year I switched over to uh, Sony to do video. So. Some of you have been subscribed to my channel because I've been putting up more, more videos. It's easy for me to work with, but when I shoot photos with my A7R5, my hand gets a bit cramped, which is one of the reasons why I'm looking forward to get back into the Nikon camp with that Z8. I handled the Z9. I loved how it felt, I, you know, but it was a little bit too heavier for me to be traveling around with. So that's my story on the Z8. Thank you very much. All right, well, let's go back to the specs here because I think a lot of these look pretty good you know, images. Raw, JPEG, and 10-bit Heath. Well, yeah, that's kind of what's expected today. And if you don't have it, well, put it in a firmware update. Although Sony, for some reason, and I'm going to rant about this, and Sony customers will be happy about this rant because the more we draw attention to this, if you own the Alpha 1 or some of the other high-level cameras by Sony, we haven't received firmware updates that provide capabilities that we see in much cheaper cameras. So there's no reason why things like 10 bit Heath can't be provided in a firmware update. All right, that's my rant on Sony. Uh, the rant on Canon is, of course, you know, let's remove that 30 minute record limit on the R5. You're doing it on new cameras, right? Uh, Hashtag release the 30 minute record limit. Uh, 30 minute record. I mean, th th let's, this is about Nikon. So let's not scratch that wound <laughs> too much. But yeah, it's a sore point. Autofocus. I want to talk about this a little bit. Um, a lot of people tend to have the consensus that um, Sony and Canon have the best autofocus systems and that Nikon needs to improve. I have no doubt that this will be an iterative uh, improvement. Um, it's going to cover more um, scenarios. So it, it's apparently it's supposed to have a special plane tracking mode, which is really good for those that cover air shows. Mm -hmm. It's going to do people, face, eye, body detection, all that wonderful stuff. Uh, the autofocus point's only 493, but it's supposed to have a 90 by 90% 90 coverage area, which I think matters. To me, I, I don't like to focus on the specs. I don't care if it's got 5,000 points or 4,000 points or 400 points. It's the outcomes that matter. And as a Canon shooter who's supposed to have one of the best autofocus systems, I can tell you when I was shooting my son doing, um, what was it, um, karate just the other week, or we were in Toronto for the CN Tower, um, you know, when they're up close and personal, it's easy to tap on my son and it's going to lock eye focus, no problem. But when he's doing karate and there's other people moving around, it moves off my son. And that's one capability that Nikon has in the Z9 is that it can subject lock. So there's always rooms for improvement everywhere. In terms of the autofocus performance, James, what are you looking for in this um, the Z8 to address uh, autofocus capabilities that you're looking for? So for video, I guess what I would be looking for is, you kind of tapped on it, is to lock onto a subject that when you got, one, you got, you got a bunch of bodies around. Because that's something even Sony still struggles with. With some of their cam with some of their cameras, is it, it's great for it, it. It's great at having detection, but when you got bodies moving in and out in front of the of the camera, it's really hard to. It sometimes does lose that. This I own the Canon C70, and it does have a lock a tracking where you can lock it'll lock on the face, but 
it it will loop. But if it finds how sh how's the best way to put it, a a more prettier face that it <laughs> likes that it likes to look at more, it'll jump to that. Um, Panasonic actually has been the one that's been the most I feel for this specific situation has actually been good at with their new S5 II and S5 II X. Mm -hmm. I actually got a chance to, to try it at NAB. And they because they allow you to use the single point autofocus with it, with the face detection, it actually, as long as, long as you keep that box in there, it will, even if things are moving into the frame, it will hold on to that subject there. So I will, I'm personally like the bird stuff. I, I, I know photographer, I know wildlife photographers and, you know, airmen, that's great for you guys. I don't really care for all that. The main thing for me, especially since I tend to do weddings sometimes, I, I would like an autofocus system that actually knows how to behave and hold a focus on a subject when there's a lot of bodies in the scene. Yeah, good point. And one thing I want to bring up, somebody made a comment um, saying that, you know, I don't believe these these specifications are legit. Uh, some of them are wrong. And, well, these are rumored specs. And now I want to do a quick reality check before we go back into uh, the Nikon Z8 specifications. These are the latest ones. I've been following Nikon. I've been watching everything on all my feeds. And, um, well, let, let's go back. This was one of the first images that we got. Look how terrible it is. You can't even make out any detail. I didn't publish a video. I didn't do a tweet. In that Simon, same... you drew that one. Just admit it. You drew that one, didn't you? Oh no, I won't even. No, I, I can't. I can't. I can't do that. It's just going to go badly for me. Because, yeah, no. <laughs> uh, this, this was actually a leaked brochure. But you know, if I zoom in, you can't make out any detail. Like it, this, this is as good yeah. as it gets, right? And of course, right at the bottom, what is that? That's from the first Nikon Z9 teaser. So again, fake. We got this, right. this one here. I gotta zoom in, pinch it, there we go. Look at that. And that looked pretty good until we got this. And then I thought, well, wait a minute, wait a minute. Let's kind of zoom in here a little bit. And you can see even with the, this is a great thing about the way computers um, will blur things that even if you do a bad job of working on something, you, you blur it, it still doesn't hide the, the level of um, smoothing that was going on here. So it's same with this one here. You can see a little bit less of it. Um, things in the corner here, um, you know, not as bad, but clearly a fake. So f three fakes, four fakes already. And then we get this pricing. And, you know, I've never seen this before where you get a leaked image pricing and something that's text should be crystal clear. And look at this. Um, again, look at this. You know, a lot of smoothing here. The lines aren't quite correct, um, and it was enough that's, that's that I. The, that's the new feature. It, it it changes it changes shape. That's one of the new specifications. Out yeah, of it. yeah. And shape again, we shifting. Got, we got pricing here. Um, Nikon rumors backed off that. This was the first one that came out. Nikon rumors called that one a. I called it a fake, and they called it a fake shortly thereafter. Uh, the only thing we really knew is that, yes, it's definitely a Nikon Z8, and yes, there's an official announcement, which is coming up in just over half an hour. So um, this, this is the reason why I like doing these sorts of videos is because it allows us to use our experience to predict what we think is going to be here. Uh, we've heard um, me and Chuck have been saying a mini Z9, a baby Z9, a Canon EOS R5 competitor, but it's going to sit on the same shelf as the A7R5 and the Sony and the Canon R5. So, looking again back at the specifications, Wayne, I'd like you to chomp in here. I've just got to switch mm -hmm. to the right screen so I can see what we're looking at. A shooting um, frames per second. What do you think of this for the Nikon Z8? Uh, it looks like they just copied it directly from the Z9. How realistic is that? Hang on, let me make my screen a bit bigger here because I'm not looking at things. Well, how was the frame per second, if you can read it to me before I get there? So we've got 20 uh, frames per second. That is lo most likely lossless raw, 1.2 gigabytes per second, same as the Z9. And then other frame rates anywhere from 30 frames per second all the way up to 120 frames per second. And that would be with uh, 11 megapixels. So as you go up in speed, you drop in resolution. Yeah, so the 20 frames per second is actually raw. The 30 frames per second is going to be the uh, full JPEG. And of mm -hmm. course, 120 is going to be the, the smaller size one. That, you know, if they have that, that would be pretty good. 
I think it's plausible. What, it, what about you? Yeah, it is. Because, I mean, that's what the Z9 has. So it should be able to do it in this camera as well. I don't think that's something that they, you know, would dumb down. But who knows? It, I keep saying that I think the Z8 has to surpass the Z9 in certain areas. Some people are saying right now, maybe there'll be a new firmware update to come out to open up some new features. Who knows? Because right now, it seems like it's right there with it in some of the things that we've seen. But mm -hmm. who knows what it's actually going to come out with. But if it does come with that, I mean, that's like Z9 specs right there. James, as a videographer, what do you think about these specs? Are they realistic? Do you care about them so much being a video shooter? Do you ever shoot stills with the camera? No, uh, I don't. Which... Um... <laughs> So I think as a video shooter, I'm, I guess I'm glad they're, they're there because they're, you got to have something for photographers. For me, it's, it's more so focusing on the video specs because I, even with something, even with when I had the R5, I basically only shot video. I, I think I only, the only reason why I took stills was to get a custom white balance. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah honesty well that's see that's what i love about you guys you're 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 like me you're you're transparent you're 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 not hiding things you're be, you're real people and, and i love that and i think that's what attracts people to our channels and one thing guys too uh, first of all um thank you very much for the likes uh one thumbs down appreciate that too if you don't like this give us a thumbs down as well it's feedback <laughs> and it's uh interactions if you really it's, don't if you really don't like us, hit that thumbs down button twice. Yes, please yeah. do, or, or four <laughs> times. We very much appreciate that. But also, I would like you to do me a favor because these gentlemen come on here. They don't get paid for this. I don't get paid for this. Live streams really make money unless you use my pre-order links down below um, for Adorama and BNH. And I've actually got those as smart links. So what happens is they're not going to work right now, but as soon as pre-order is available... Um, it'll show you the link, not just for the Nikon Z8, but also all kit avail available. So if you use those links, I do get anywhere from 2 to 6% back, which really does help. But to help my, my colleagues here, please, if you don't know Chuck, subscribe to his channel. Chuck, it's AP Studios. He does live streams every Wednesday at noon and Saturday around 9 p.m. James Jackson Films, uh, he's a filmmaker, and I love his viewpoints because it's all... It's cinematic, it's corporate videos, it's producing films at a level that's above me. And of course, Kevin, he's a wildlife photographer. Kevin North, how do I say your last name? I'm going to say it wrong, I know. No, you're good. It's uh, Nordstrom, just like the store, I guess. Nor uh, N-O-R-D-S-T-R-O-M, oh. Nordstrom. I was going to say North Stream for some reason. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> you, you know when you're going to screw something up, and because if you say it wrong, then people are going to focus on the wrong, so I didn't want to do that. Right, right. No, it's... Growing up, I it was pronounced wrong in school too, so it doesn't really matter. Understood. And Wayne, um, tell, you have a channel too. What's the name of your channel, Wayne? Just my name, Wayne Armatix. There you go, guys. So please do that. Uh, look at that. We just got an extra 10 uh, likes. So we're almost at 500 people. So th this is one of the reasons I do these live streams is because I know you're hungry for information and you want to know what this camera is going to look like. So far, everything I've seen here, I think is highly plausible. I think that, look, the Canon R5 can do 20 frames per second. The Sony A7R5, 10 frames per second. Um, so why couldn't Sony do that? Well, they're using CF Express Type A. And when it comes to video, you can actually do um, 8K, 30 frames per second raw with a Type A card. Because with Angel Bird's latest one, the one terabyte for, I think it's under $500 US. Mm -hmm. You can actually shoot yeah. up to 650 megabytes maximum sustained write speed. So you can easily do that because 8K RAW is 325 megabytes per second. But when it comes to shooting high-speed continuous stills, if you want to hold down that shutter button, we'll use the Z9 as an example, 20 frames per second, lossless RAW, what you're looking at is 1.2 gigabytes per second. You need a high-speed CF Express Type B card. Not all Type B cards will do. The Angel Birds will do 1.3 gigabytes per second, and for photographers that shoot high-speed stills, the Mark II AV Pros can do 1.48 gigabytes per second. So that's why I believe the Sony's kind of up against the wall here, and they need to break that thing down. That Type A card is getting in the way. So that's why I think 20 frames per second, Canon can do it, they're going to do it, 
and um, the 120 frames per second, why not? I mean, it's that's not what professionals are going to use it for. It's helpful if you're doing social media stuff and you want the speed rather than you want the resolution. And I, and I think it makes sense. But now I want to talk about the video here. This is where James is really going to come in here. I'm going to zoom in a little bit because it's a little bit hard to read. And if you're watching on your phone, it's probably even harder. Um, where is it now? I've lost where I am. Where Video. Here we go. So, James, we're looking at 8.3K. 50, 60 frames per second, up to 50 and 60 frames per second. That's Nikon RAW. And then 8K, 30 frames per second, so 24, 25, and 30. And what we're seeing with this camera, James, and this might be, I'm curious to see what you think about this. This is not DCI. This is UHD. Now, you can, you can pull DCI out of 8.3K. So let's, yeah. you know, I want to be transparent here. It doesn't do DCI according to these specs in 4K, but if you shoot in that 8.3 mode, you're able to get DCI out of that, okay? Um, 4K up to 120 frames per second, same as the R5. You've got Nikon RAW, but this is where Canon differs. Nikon Z8, according to this rumor spec, does ProRes RAW. I think it's plausible, especially after the lawsuit. I think we're going to see that in the Nikon Z8 as well. You've got ProRes 422HQ, and that's what I shoot in most of the time. It's Apple ProRes 422. H265, H264, a Nikon Log HLG. I mean, that looks pretty good. James, what do you think of those specs? Am I too excited? Am um, I too excited here? I mean, I, if you compare this to the pre previous Nikon generations, these are actually very exciting specs. Um, and I will say it's from a video perspective, from filmmaking, it's pretty solid. Look, if it's above 40, uh, 4096, you can do DCI 4K. It's just about scaling down to yeah. it. Uh, you may it may be an aspect ratio thing, but honestly, you shoot up, you shoot AK. I don't think not having DCI. If you have AK, I'm not sure not having DCI 4K is going to be a problem unless you're shooting DCI AK, which very few people right now are are, are doing that. Um, so I'll put it to that. Um, in regards of the ProRes RAW internally, and that that would be I think a lot that will intrigue a lot of people, especially having an alternative to Z Raw. That if you're not working in DaVinci Resolve, the processing will uh, may be difficult with that. Personally, I don't care for ProRes Raw simply because I do work in DaVinci Resolve, and Blackmagic Design has not implemented ProRes Raw into DaVinci Resolve unless you go and you have to do some back way door of converting it to cinema dng so that's a personal thing and i will clearly say that that's a personal thing overall i think this is a great solid in terms of video specs i personally and i know some people are going to raise their eyebrows like really you want more and i'm like yes when i start comparing it to other competition the fact that there is no open gate recording option which people like panasonic are options Canon has the capability of doing it well. I don't think they will, but if they do, that that's something they can do in a firmware with their R5C in particular. Uh, the fact that uh, my whole thing is I want to see more of the Ergo stuff because cameras like the FX3, the FX6, the Canon C70, the R5C, they have a lot of great custom customizations for video that to me will still make me make those cameras more appealing than this even with all the great internal specs if it if the functionality and i, I brought this up i know wayne watched this video i recently just re released a video yeah. where i talked about they really need to improve their ecosystem around video it, to attract more video centric people so uh, i'm oh, really James, curious can i interrupt be enough, be enough of it. go ahead i i that point there is very valid. Uh, there's a lot of comments. We see this all the time. Why can't they just produce a photocentric camera? It's going to cost us less. Why are we paying for features we don't need? And, and mm -hmm. the reason is, and th there's been some studies on this, and that's why you're seeing more and more cameras, even though you would think, well, it's a Z9, it's a 1DX Mark III, an R3. Why are they so focused on video? Because they won't sell. Okay, The competition is doing it. There's so much need for video these days. So many people are using these cameras for video that they won't sell as many. And as somebody who is a videographer, why am I using an R5 type camera for this? Well, the simple reason is the R5C cost me about another $1,000 more. Um, and, you know, 
right here, I can switch out lenses. I can do so many things. And I had this problem. I went to the CN Tower this weekend. But instead of just taking my Canon R5 around my neck, which I've done many times before, and nobody says anything to me, I had it attached to a gimbal. I had the mic on top, and I had the video lens hood, not the stills lens hood. And I got stopped mm -hmm. by security right away saying, sorry, sir, you're not allowed in with a professional camera. To which I responded, define professional, please, because everybody else in here has a camera too. He went immediately to a supervisor. Supervisor came and said, are you doing interviews? Are you meeting with anybody? I said, no, this is just for family. He said, okay, no problem, right? So I didn't have a problem, but you see, it's the optics too. Wherever I travel in the world, there's many places that say no video, but they don't say no to the cameras and they really can't. Yes, so, uh, you know, it's like you're wearing a cloak when you use a stills hybrid camera. If you wanna get places and get shots that you're normally not allowed, these work. So really good points, James. Keep going. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off, but I wanted to highlight that point that you brought up. No, no. Uh, no, it's no problem. Uh, yeah, to me, it's sort of like I'm really curious to see the design because as you, because for that same reason. Recently, I was at uh, a gar um, some, uh, an estate garden area with the Panasonic Lumis G86. I pulled up, and the, uh, they basically were just like, you know, they asked me and I was just like, oh, I'm just coming out to take pictures. And they're like, OK, go ahead. You know, if I rolled up, if I just slapped a matte box on all of a sudden and I got 10 more questions, it's more the more you build the camera up, it's like 10 more questions to, of what are you doing and what do you, what's going on here? So having the so having functionality where you can keep things tiny and constrained for video shooting is great. Uh, but yeah, basically, I was just saying is that there's a lot of things outside of the internal specifications. I think the internal specifications for for this camera and basically for the for what Nikon has done previously is excellent. But there's a lot of other areas they have to improve on, and I'm hoping we'll hear some of some idea or at least a, a hint at what may be possible coming from Nikon in terms of video. What if it's what if we see with the body design, or we see maybe some more video centric lenses that they may be looking at. So that was it. Sorry, I had a dog in the, everyone's awake now. Mm -hmm. We have a dog in the stream. Uh, I just got some information coming in, so I'm gonna share a bit of information I got. You won't see this anywhere else. So information is starting to leak in just a little bit. I only have one tidbit. So for those of you ready for pre-order, you ready for this? I know when the pre-order links are going to be available on Adorama, b &H, at least in the United States, probably Canada as well. It'll be worldwide. Let's face it. It's going to be worldwide. So here's where the links are going to be available. They're not going to be available at the beginning of the presentation. They will be available at the end, once the embargo is lifted. So you can relax while the Nikon presentation is underway. And, I, you know... I'm keeping an eye on it here. We're only 21 minutes away. Look at this. We got 550 people ready and anxious. We're going to cover this live, and then you're going to hear our analysis afterwards. So the pre-order links will be available on all those sites that offer them. But here's, I want to, you know, I can't remember a gentleman just asked me a few moments ago about pre-ordering in Canada. Uh, and I want to say this to everybody. No matter where you are in the world, if you have a local camera store, you want to create a relationship with them because... They don't use fancy pre-order links like B&H and Adorama do, and there's no getting around those. That's how they do it. That's their process. That's their policy. Whereas local camera stores like Downtown Camera in Toronto or other camera stores in your local city, they usually use some sort of spreadsheet or some sort of notepad. They take names down. Some ask for deposits. Some don't. That's what I would do. I was talking to Patrick at Downtown Camera, and here's what he told me. He already has a huge amount of asks for the camera. So if you haven't already talk, talked to your local camera um, um, store, you want to do so. And if you are on the fence or you're interested on this, as soon as the pre-order links go available, and again, I've got them in the section down below for Adorama and B&H, go ahead and pre-order. Even if you're on the fence, because you can always cancel that pre-order. We'll, we'll know what date it's going to ship. You can cancel the pre-order um, while you watch the reviews. But... It, while you're thinking and waiting about it, you're going to lose your opportunity. So definitely make sure you go ahead and do that. All right. Um, I want to see Chuck, you've been awfully quiet. Um, what do you think about these yeah. video specs as a, well, well, I want to chime in on a couple of things real yeah. quick. I've been listening to the conversation. I think it's a great conversation. I hear it from a filmmaker. I hear it from a photographer. 
And see, there lies the problem is Nikon can't go both ways right now. One of the things everybody needs to consider is Nikon needs to fill out the lineup. When I say fill out the lineup, Z6, Z7, II, Z72 are, are, are fantastic cameras, but uh, everybody will admit we want to see that uh, autofocus. And I know, and this doesn't have anything to do with birds or anything else. Everybody wants to see this autofocus technology uh, trickle down into those cameras. Therefore, we don't have cameras below the Z9, theoretically. Uh, I and I'm with them. Nikon has to fill that lineup out. There are some niche cameras that people are asking for that I think Nikon will get around to. When it comes to uh, the hybrid uh, movement, you know, I, I hear you, James. You're absolutely right. And and Wayne's been talking about it. We, Wayne and I have gone back and forth on box type camera or additional uh, 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 controls and things that are more video centric. And I agree with that too, but Nikon has to get the customer base happy first. I think that Nikon is dedicating a lot more effort to video. I mean, look at what's inside the Z9 and what's uh, rumored to be inside the Z8. You got to admit for a hybrid camera, that's stacked pretty heavy there. And so the next question will be battery life and, and heat dissipation. We don't know. We're going to find out maybe in this presentation. But if they've controlled the heat dissipation, heat issue, uh, where others have struggled, and I know they will get better as well, then that's a big hit for Nikon. Somebody mentioned that Nikon's doing this. This camera is there to bring the D850 shooters over into the mirrorless world. And no, I think it's just to stay, not just to stabilize the base but to offer something that is on par with what we're seeing with the other makers. It will exceed, it has to exceed in certain areas, and video being one of them, uh, because this camera will have to stand for the next three to four years with all the other makers coming out with improved bodies, the R5 II, and whatever Sony uh, comes up with beyond the A7R5. So it's not about just matching, even though that's where everybody wanted Nikon to go, just match the specs in this, uh, this slot, this category. I think it's going to go beyond that. I have no idea what the tricks are within the camera, but I think there is secret sauce that we don't know about. We won't know about it until maybe 20 minutes from now. But... And I'm not telling everybody, just wait and let's see, because we're already in the wait and see. But I, I think Nikon will address some of these things. But, uh, you know, everybody talks about the APS-C body. So many people want that. So many people want the stills only body. You know, the ZF is what everybody's calling it, as the ZFC and just ZF for full frame. Uh, Nikon, I think, will get to that as well. But right now, let's just get the lineup filled up. You know, get all the Z6 II shooters that want to upgrade to better video or better whatever. Get all the Z7 uh, II shooters that want a higher megapixel sensor. And that is in my pr uh, prediction for Nikon moving forward back in, I, I put a chart together back in June of last year. I think the Z7 III is going to check the block for so many people that are looking for a large megapixel body. I think Nikon's going to do that. They, they really have to, right? Uh, yeah. This camera is the all-rounder. This is the camera that checks the block for everybody that wanted a Z9, couldn't afford it, or didn't want the big body. So I, if you look at it in total, you can see that Nikon is addressing what the consumers, at least within the Nikon base, want. But I don't think we've seen it all yet, and we're just going to have to wait. I think there will be a more beautiful <laughs> It, it, it's coming. All right. Sorry about that, Simon. No, it's it's your second rant of the day. It's awesome, Chuck. Um, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I think this is going to look, I, I remember the R5 and just the way you are today. Back in 2019, I had the 70D and I was ready to just say, I'm done with Canon because I, I when I got the heard the announcement for the EOS R, I did one of these. You're kidding me. <laughs> I waited this long. It doesn't even catch up to Sony. So I started looking GH5. I started looking elsewhere. I started looking Sony, and I heard, oh, Sony, A7 III. But I thought, that's due for a refresh, so I stayed away from there. Then I heard A7S III. That's probably what you want to wait for. And I waited, and I waited, and I waited. I looked everywhere. I looked at Nikon. I looked at Pen... I didn't look at Pentex, I'll be honest. Um, <laughs> but I, when the R5 came out, I thought, 
No, this is too good to be true. Are you kidding me? Canon somehow leapfrogged the competition by a factor of X. And we've got 8K raw video, 30 frames per second. Uh, we've got 20 frames per second uh, raw. We've got all these capabilities. And I just thought, it's, it's ridiculous. There's no way. And so now when I look at the Z8, I remember back to how I felt then. And I see this is the same for Nikon owners. Whether you're stills or video, you're going to look at this camera and think, wow. For the people who look at this camera and say, oh my God, it's the Z9 for less price? Perfect. Yes, it's going to sell. It's going to do well because, see, here's how I see this. People say it's the same as the Z9, so I'm going to buy it. Sure, but it's not. If you're a Sports Illustrated photographer, that type of group where you're doing the Olympics, you're trying to get the best shot, the Z8 isn't going to work for you because you know that the Z9 is going to have a faster buffer. It's going to be able to clear quicker. You can hold down that shutter button at 20 frames per second and your battery will go dead eventually after several thousand shots or 10,000 shots. It's going to be able to go, it's going to be able to outrun you. You're not going to want to go through that many photos. But if no. you're spraying and praying like this, then like this, then like this, it's going to keep up. It's going to clear. But not only that, dual CF Express Type B cards. So you have a backup yep. to both cards right there. That is enough for a professional to spend not just $1,500 more, but a lot more. And well, I, I, yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. But I keep being told that a professional can shoot with a, 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 an entry level camera and get the same results, which no. I believe is true. No, well, so well, let, I, I, let me I, give you the scenario, well, Chuck. No. I'm but, talking about that Sports me, Illustrated segment. Let me, but, let, me finish, let me finish one thing here real quick, sure. Simon, only because, you know, um, let me ask everybody in the audience as well. If Nikon found the secret sauce, the way to make sure that the buffer clears just as fast in the Z8, if they also uh, have whipped the heat uh, overheating issue uh, via whatever, uh, again, secret sauce they have found, isn't that a win for everybody? Isn't that a win for Canon, Sony, Panasonic, and everybody else? I mean, why would people not want Nikon to do this? Why would they not applaud Nikon if they found it? Because guess what? You're going to get it next. I mean, there, this well, is where we are in the, in the community. We don't want to see another brand succeed because we want to be on top. Well, the fact of the matter is, if another brand does succeed, that is going to trickle down or trickle over to uh, other brands as well. Why is it we want uh, when there is a new uh, launch or something like that, if we're sitting on another brand, and I, I, I've been seeing this in, not here in some of the comments, but uh, elsewhere, that it seems that people want a brand to fail just to keep their brand where it sits. I got news for everybody. We keep doing this leapfrogging all the time. So uh, what if Nikon has found this ability to prolong battery life, to uh, keep the camera from overheating with no limit, to... Uh, uh, to move the data even faster so that we're not worried about buffering. I wish Canon would do that. I wish Sony would do that. And I hope Nikon does it. And I think we all need to start looking at it that way. Sorry, Simon, I just had to jump in with that. <laughs> no, I, I love yeah, the I dynamic was, this of the conversation. Then I'll I, hand it over to you, James. That? Oh, hold on, just give me a second. Yeah. What I was referring to, Chuck, is for that certain segment, and it's a very niche segment that it's all about I don't care what the camera does. I need the best of the best of the best to make sure that I get the best photo, that I get the shot. But what you said about even the cheapest uh, camera will work for a really good photographer, that I do agree with. So I'm gonna hand it back over to you, James. I just wanna draw attention to, we got another super chat from Moving Matt. And Moving Matt said, love the live stream setup, Tom. I'm excited to see what Nikon is going to bring to the table. And I really love what he said here. The better the Z8, the better for the next Canon or Sony. Over to you, James. Okay, so I also will say, well, Canon and Sony, well, mainly Canon and Panasonic have already solved the heat dis dissipation. The R5C actually has resolved that with their cooling with their cooling system and fan. And to, and to me, I think people still, well, I know R, people know the R5 because it's it helps with the typically how hybrid camera shoots. But to me, as someone who actually got a who actually got a chance to check out the R5C at NAB, it was it it, rem, it quickly reminded me like this is actually a pretty powerful camera on its own, and it's uh, and it doesn't run into heat issues at all because it has that built-in fan. Um, I, I I do agree with you, Chuck. Like, look, 
you could give me a, a, a you can give me any camera and I, it could be an r50 i know how to light i know sound i know all this other stuff i will still smoke probably 70 percent of people that will try to shoot who come with higher end yeah. cameras because i know the ins and out and i also i'm totally with you on the the as people trying to i i see it all the time that people are scared that if you bring up either if you bring up a flaw of their camera manufacturer that they love or if you bring up another one they're just afraid because then that's going to maybe not their cameras are not going to do well i don't care as someone who shoots film i don't care my primary camera right now is the canon c70 because to me that's the best camera for under ten thousand dollars for video uh but i also have a panasonic gh6 i've looked at so many other cameras to c complement my videos in terms of needs where I need it, it it's brand agnostic because I'm looking for what fits the need I'm looking to solve a problem that I have in my in whether it's my YouTube life or my professional life I don't care about the brand the only thing I care about is maybe not trying to spend so much on an ecosystem with various lenses but Nikon has but Nikon can also do that because it still has the the older uh the older mount system yeah. uh people could still uh, that people could still adapt to if they cho should choose to i just wanted to throw that in there real quick hey can i say something really quick you're muted simon sorry about that guys no, um <laughs> i want to say we're t minus 10 t minus um eight minutes here oh. i'll hand it over to you kevin you can say what you would like to say but i also want each one of you before we get to that announcement tell us if you were the president of nikon what you would do what the nikon z8 would be for you go ahead kevin well, i'll answer <clears throat> i'll answer that question really quick and then i'll go into really quick just uh my thoughts on the other part um first i i, I would want to see just the, really the the z8 be under four thousand dollars stack sensor uh 45 to 60 megapixels somewhere in the range of there and uh, really that's just i mean that's really about it um and then i want to go in back into really quick uh what i think of the whole community about uh, agreeing i was agreeing with chuck when he was saying about how um you know we need to kind of squash that thing about bashing other brands and stuff like that i, I think and this is just my experience most of that, almost all of it actually is just online. Like when you go out into the field or you, you're, you're around other photographers, it's almost like they don't, people in person don't care what you shoot. It just seems like it's always online where people want to bash other photographers and want to bash other brands. It's never in person for whatever reason. True. Which is why I usually ignore those people because you know what? I don't care. This, this community that I <laughs> right, built up, right. look at us. We, sorry. No, I said, you're right. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, I, 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 I'm not into this tribalism. I don't tolerate it on this channel. When people are making fun of others, I delete the comments. I remove them. I hide people. Right. Because, you know, this is a place where we come to as like Chuck, he's, he's got a Nikon and I don't hate Chuck. Um, <laughs> you know, James is, a, a, <laughs> right? I mean, like, come on, what is with this? I mean, I can right. learn from uh, my friend of mine at Henry's in Newmarket here, Brian, he's a Nikon shooter and we get along. We talk well. I've had him on the channel before as well. You know, it's just silliness. And, you know, the only reason I shoot Canon is not because they're the biggest, because they have the greatest market share, or that because they, they give out really nice free gifts or anything ridiculous. It's because my brother had a Canon and I said, oh, he's got a professional camera. What should I get? I asked him and of right. course he recommended a Canon. It's why most of us own what we own. Um, so I want to go to, um, let's go to Wayne, because he's been awfully quiet. Wayne, if you were the president <laughs> of Nikon, what would the Z8 be for you? It would be that mid-tier camera that, you know, bringing content creators up in the game for photography people who can't afford the Z9, giving everyone basically a taste of what they want. Since we are... I mean, the president, we're behind on video. We still have to build out our video line to catch up with the other guys. This will kind of be that, that intermediary camera to get along those ways. So it may still have some, you know, folder features for the uh, old photo guys, people who've been shooting Nikon for a long period of time, but have some features as well for the video people 
were going to be coming over because we wanted to pull some of that people over. The Z9 sensor and processor and so on, I, I think that's a good start for that camera. But uh, going forward, I think anything that comes after this should also be better with autofocus, all those are things that you know the younger generation content creator wants. And I would really want to put something out there on the, um, the video side, more cinema-like, audio, uh, recording, all that stuff built into it. And I know that's probably going to take them some time to do. As I was talking to James earlier in um, chat, they're an optics company. For the video side of things, they're going to need to have some lens. And one of the things he had mentioned in his video was that when you're utilizing lens from other people, the, the wheels were the, the, um, the rubbers are for focus and so on, because you, you tend to shoot manual. You're going to have a follow focus system. If they're all in the same place, you don't have to dismount the system just to match a lens. You can just take a lens and put it on there. And I think Nikon can make some great lens to fit those systems. So that's what I'd be focusing on in the future. This is just to get them started with the Z8, rather. Thank you very much, Wayne. Um, Vinton, thank you so much for the super chat. He says, and this is to everyone here in this room, it's also to you in the audience as well because your comments keep us going. Thank you, boys, for doing such a good conversation. Much appreciated. And I just want to let you know that this live stream is almost about to hit the most watched live stream I've ever done. The, the Canon EOS R6 Mark II got 759 concurrent viewers, and we just hit 761 from my screen. So this is the most watched ever live stream that Let's I've done. Thumbs up, guys. Thumbs up. So, thumbs it's, up, it's, comment. It's and another thing, too, I want to say, with, as we're just around thumbs the three-minute mark, I'm just 80 subscribers away from that 40,000 mark, which is a, a, an incredible thank you to everybody Let's out go. there. That's easy to do today, folks. Come on. Well, there's many in here that are in here yeah. right now uh, or that, or that are watching that may not be in the chat. Come on. Subscribe and Easily. let's get uh, Mr. Simon over 40K. Thank you very much, Chuck. And what I want to do now, we've got three minutes, and I don't know if that's enough time for Chuck's fourth rant, but we've got a two and a half <laughs> minutes to the announcement, and then we'll cover live. Uh, Chuck, the Nikon Z8, if you were the president, what would it be? Everything that's rumored right now in the Z8 is is okay. That would be my call. You did it right, team, and that's it. Quick and short. I don't know what to do. I've got time to fill now. Um, <laughs> you got James, James, James has got to be president right. too. The short, the shortest rant Chuck has ever had. And by the way, uh, yeah, it is. It's not even a rant. It's so clear, concise, and coherent. That's just right. unbelievable. <laughs> Oh, and my Mac just said, hey, update available. No, thank you. I hate that when that nope. happens. All right. <laughs> At least it's not a forced update. James has to be president. He's got a minute here, doesn't he? Oh, I'm sorry, James. My bad. Buddy, uh, president of Nikon, please go ahead. Me? Oh, um, <laughs> I guess for me, if I was the president of Nikon, what I, what I want the ZA to be? I guess... So I would say, I guess I would be sort of split. And so this is why I would not be a good president for Nikon. Uh, part of me would be trying to really look to address the issues, but I would actually probably be more, a little bit more riskier and say, let's try to do something different. Let's really just go full on, you know, uh, balls to the walls with video centric features and just go all out, get, make it, make it a, a, a real handheld video camera monster. I think they got 80% there. I don't know that they got all the way there. So I want things like open things like re, uh, using the full 32 sensor so we can enjoy the full resolution as the fellow photo shooters get to use it. Uh, things like false color, shutter angle, a true 24 frames a second. The um, I would uh, I would come out and say, hey, maybe find some features as Wayne pointed out. Not necessarily even lenses, but maybe something like an a, an ND adapter system that can that way you don't have to worry about screwing on and finding different mounting systems for your NDs. Just put that on there, kind of like what Canon did when they started their RF mount systems. Uh, I guess that's mainly it. I would I would I. There's a lot of photo cameras, and I know there's a, still a lot of improvements that photo cameras is. I would love to just and this is just not Nikon. Let me just say this: this isn't Nikon. This is just camera manufacturers. I wish there was just one where they would just say, "We're, you know what? We're just going to go all in on video, and photos is going to be like, yeah, just because I was like, there's enough photo ca photo centric cameras. I would like someone <laughs> to just go, you know what? 
let's go all in on video. And I hey, Jenny, say- I've been an advocate for video and Nikon for a while now, so I'm I'm with you. I'm feeling you. It's just Nikon needs to fill out some voids real quick, and I'm with you. I'm 100% with you. All right, Simon, take it away. We are Let's waiting go. on Nikon USA. You can see it right here. We're ready to go. So as soon as it's live, we're going to pipe up. We'll talk over where we need to because this is not going to be – because you can go ahead and watch it on Nikon without us interrupting. 861 of you are here. Here we go, guys. Here we go. Thanks for the super chat. Oh, boy. Here we go. This is exciting. Can everybody hear the audio pass through? Nope. No, you can't. No, no audio. There we go. Z8. They just said it. Z8. Here we go. We can finally see what it looks like. Look at that. Oh, just like the Z9 with the Z8 on top. That's right. Yeah. It looks very similar to some of the leaked uh, images. You know, there's actually some videos out. I'm actually on Matt Who's Maddie's video. I'm going to watch that. See what you can find out. Yeah. Report back in. Let's do a bit of a recap of what we're seeing out there. So we're trying to sell that. It's Look at that. Minus 10C, 14 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's good. Go anywhere camera like the OM Systems OM1. Yeah, a lot of this was on Nikon Rumors. I didn't know if you realized that they had a repost uh, link on that stuff. Yeah. Now, so far, the rumors are quite accurate here. 12 bit raw internal? Yeah. That. 8K UHD. So, no DCI. We were correct on that. So, it looks like Nikon rumors nailed it. High res zoom, that's useful as well. Same tilt screen as the Nikon Z9. So, no flippy screen. Yeah, I call that. Yeah. I was expecting that. So, the 4 axis tilting monitor. I don't think that's that wouldn't be a reason for me not to get it. You just learn to you work with it. Pre-release capture again, they nailed that. Looks like so far from what we can see here, guys, the rumors were bang on. Yeah. Yep. Only one CF Express Type B and an SD card slot, so not yep. two. Yeah. I don't know if I should mention this just yet, but there was actually two USB ports. I was talking yep. about that in my video, and I said that I think the other one's going to be for an external recorder. I remember something All of I this. about. All of this was in, in the rumors, so we're bang on here. What I'm really excited to see is the price of this thing here and the different options. But this, this you is know a what I'm excited to see is the fact that people are going to uh, be able to experience this uh, EVF that uh, Nikon has now that was in the Z9 that people that you haven't seen anything yet for all those shooting Z6, uh, Z7s. Battery grip, no surprises there. I this, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, for those of you uh, on the panel here, you might want to check uh, Gordon Lang. You might want to check Petapixel and some others and see what they're saying because I'm curious to know because, see, now we're going to have real reviews, and that's where we're going to move into the post analysis. So I'd love to get some of that so we can start boiling it down and bringing everything together in one room here. Heath, 10-bit Heath, yep. HLG, no surprises. Again, aligned with all the rumors. 12-bit Nikon RAW and ProRes RAW HQ, 10-bit 422, H.265. Peter's done a great job here. Look at this. It's word for word. Oh, yeah. 8K over sample 4K, what we have in the Canon. That is amazing. Now, did, it, did we see 8K 60? I remember seeing 8K 30. Not, yeah, I didn't see 60. No. They said 8K 60 in the rumors, but I haven't no. seen that yet. So, yeah. so, uh, so according to Matt, Matt, the cards double card slot cannot relay record cannot uh dual record. You well, can neither could the yeah. R five when it first came out. Yeah, true. So the man didn't do that either.
Some people in the chat are saying May 25th for thirty nine ninety six. Look at that, guys. Under four thousand yep. dollars. May the twenty fifth. Again, Nikon Rumors got that correct. And what have I been what have me and what have we been saying all along, Chuck? Under yep. four thousand dollars. Thirty eight ninety nine to thirty nine ninety yep. nine, right? It, it it had to be, and Nikon knew that. It had to be. What yeah. about a stack sensor? Do we know if it has a stack sensor yet? That's what we want to know. No. Seven hundred and twenty four people still watching. Stack Z9 sensor or not. smaller body. Bam. Guys, it's here. The wait is over. They didn't give us a Z30, a Z50 successor. This is your Z8. It's here. Yep. The rumors were saying 8K, 50, and 60 frames per second in both raw, 8.3K, as well as standard. But so far, I've only seen 30. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get 60. And yes, Swift, the R5 can do that, but it didn't do it right away. It came in a firmware update. Yes. This is uh, this is terrific. So it still has the same two hour record limit. Yeah, but <laughs> <that's fine. laughs> look, it, I think everything the, is is a Z nine sensor. That's the only time yeah. I actually do. Um, Two hours is I'm going to be doing live streaming like this, and then it's you don't have that time limit over HDMI, right? Hang on a second. So 45.7 million pixels. Total pixels 52.37. Effective 45.7. So I think it's the same thing. I'm in the specifications. I stopped watching the video because it's yeah. on Nikon Asia. So you I'm pre-orders live on B&H. Yep. So all my pre-orders are live. They're ready to go. You've got them. If you want to use my pre-order links, I really do appreciate it. They were to Adorama and B&H, and also check out with your local camera store. You can order this now. You'll get it. If you order it really quickly, you'll have it within two weeks. That's pretty amazing. Finally, it's here. It is. So I'm hearing that it is 8K60. Hmm. Yes, it has ProRes, um, ProRes 422 and HQ Raw. Yeah. Were there so any the announcements HD alongside of the camera or no? Look at this. Say again. So thirty percent lighter than the Z9. Now, what was oh, the weight of the Z9? Because I think the rumor said nine hundred and sixty grams, which I thought. There we go. Look at that. Eight K, sixty frames per second, twelve bit raw. Look at that. Yeah. yeah. Better than the R5, guys. That's what we wanted, right? I'm an R5 owner. I want this to be better. And pretty well, all cameras are gonna. These stills hybrid will shoot progressive. That's just how it is. Um, 8K UHD. That's pretty nice. Um, now I'm bored. Where's the? It lenses? had to. It it had to be. It had to be four under four thousand because if it was under if it was if the bridge was only a thousand or less between the Z9 and this one, people wouldn't be buying it. They'd be buying the Z9. All right, guys. Um, bear with me. Chuck, do you want to take over for a minute? I'm trying to bring in somebody who has hands-on with a camera. Absolutely, sir. Absolutely. So we got a special guest coming, folks. I warned you about this. It sounds great. All right, so there it is. June of 2022, I actually put it to paper and have a video to prove it. I was just two hundred dollars off the price. Everything that I expected, which was easy actually, because I just expected it to be a baby Z nine, which everybody started yelling about. Uh, but anyway, wow! So I'm happy with what I see. I hope everybody else is. I uh, I don't know about the size. I thought it might be a little bit bigger. I don't know. It's going to be interesting to feel it in the hands. But I know, uh, James, it is not the filmmaker's camera that a lot of people, you know, filmmakers or video, video folks wanted. But I, I re rest assured Nikon's going to go down that path. 
th this is just the hybrid version of it, but there will be, I believe, a video centric camera coming out of Nikon. They have a couple more bodies yet to get through. And then I think that we'll start seeing some of these other cameras. And I think video, they said it themselves, video is something they are definitely concentrating on. And anybody that doesn't believe they, you know, what they said, look at what we're seeing now in the Z9 and the Z8. So it's not Nikon is not going to jump ahead of everybody, you know, by leaps and bounds and become number one in sales. That's not what I'm saying, but they're going to push mm -hmm. others to actually up their game. And that's exactly what we need in that's the exactly photo and want. video yeah. community. Yep. 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 Um, you want that? Leaf so, yeah. Log. yeah, I know everybody wants the leaf log because everybody wants, I guess everybody just wants that, that, we're kind of we're kind of junkies where we had that initial DSLR resolution that all of a sudden that initially started with Canon and then it le Canon leapfrogged everybody and then Sony went into the mirrorless world first and they and they and everybody kind of wants that next thing. It's stacked. And yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So it's stacked. Sorry, just wanted to interrupt. So, it is stacked. This is from BNH's site. It is stacked. X Speed Seven image processor. Okay. Cool. Nice. 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 I will You're I will say this. Yeah. It, this. Go ahead. Go ahead, I, James. I'm sorry. That. Sorry. I'll just say, like, just and this is a personal thing. I'm not trying to generalize like filmmakers. This is personally um I think it's a solid I think it's a solid entry point in terms of video. Um I think it's it's gonna we're really gonna see how the use case. Um it looks like according to who is Matt, who is Maddie, it looks like for him, in terms of a wedding day, which is typically like eight to ten hours, you're going to go through like three battery lives on that using the shooting the higher resolutions and stuff like that. Um, he's not sure about the overheating, um, he, so he said he suggests just renting it and before trying it out. But he he personally never came across it, but he wasn't he didn't push it to the extremes just yet because I guess he only got it for a limited time. It looks right. like to me that we're going to we're going to see how, how strong its video capabilities. But as Chuck said, there's there, there's a whole lot of other work that I think, and just me personally, I think something like the Canon. I know people compare it to the R5, and I totally understand it. To me, the R5C is something I I personally would try want people to compare things to, not the R5, but the R5C. And I think the That's R5C is a superior camera. To, in terms of video features than the Z8, but the Z8 is, I think, a solid, I think people within the Nikon community are going to enjoy it, um, especially those that just, they, they, they do take photography and they just want something that they can sw quickly switch the videos and get great and, and record to great codecs and be able to deliver the videos. James, There's other things I want to see. Go ahead. I, I, yeah. I, you know, all of us, we, we, we've sp spent a lot of time following the Nikon Z8, what we thought would be the Nikon Z8, what we thought would be the rumored specifications. But you know what? Now, as I promised in my videos, I, I want to turn it over to somebody who actually has hands-on experience. And I'd uh. like to introduce Chris who actually is with Nikon Canada. Chris, can you introduce yourself to us, please? Sure, absolutely. Uh, my name is Chris Oganek. I'm the uh, product manager, the training manager at uh, Nikon Canada. And uh, I'm as excited as you guys, I can tell you. Oh, and look at it. It is amazing that we have actually <laughs> <laughs> finally announced the Z8. <laughs> I, I'm going to have to go full screen here. Let me just change who I, sorry, Chuck, I'm going to, I want to see this camera full screen in person. So there we go. Look at that, guys. And let's correct the name here. See, we're doing this on the fly here. This is live on the fly. <laughs> Did I spell your name Man, correctly? I like the contour of that grip. Uh, I like that. How does it feel in the mm -hmm. hand compared to a Z6 or Z7? That's what I want to know. So personally, and I have, and I will say I have giant monkey hands. So <laughs> cameras, cameras of, of smaller sizes, I can obviously, like, I actually love how the Z6 and Z7 feel considering the smaller size, but every small camera on the market, pretty much my pinky hangs off of it. So I just, I've gotten used to it. It's one of the facts of life that when I shoot a smaller non-gripped body, it is going to be non-pinkied, but right. with the Z8, 
it actually uh... fits quite quite nicely so it still has the ergonomics the feel you would expect but at the same time you're actually able to get a little bit more of a grip because it is definitely larger than a z6 and a z7 series body that's what everybody wanted to hear thanks chris yeah, no. I, I, look, I will tell you right now, grip is the grip is so, is always a bit of big thing because you pointed out there's a lot of mirrorless bodies. So whenever I look for a camera, I look. I'm, I'm not have. I don't have the smallest hand too, and I personally don't need the pinky T holding thing. It, it, it bothers me sometimes. <laughs> so it's good to see that that actually is there because that's one of the things that I in terms of cameras that I love. I love seeing. What I want yeah, to if do it doesn't is feel open good up in the hand. You ain't gonna shoot. I want to open up the floor, guys. As we're into the post now, we've got somebody who's got literal hands-on with a camera who's been using it, who actually works for Nikon, so they know they can give you all the answers you need. So if you've got questions, go ahead and post them. And the first question we have for you, Chris, Scott wants to know, what's the PD section under the USB-C? Yes. So that, yeah, so, so that basically, so the second of the uh, USB-C ports, we have the two now, the PD, basically, this is designed as a power. dedicated power delivery port. So if you're, uh, let's say you're, we're talking video. Uh, let's say you're running on a gimbal and you want uh, to control it with our MCN10. Well, the MCN10 gives you full control of the camera, but you have to use up one of the USB-C ports for that. So if you also want extended battery life by using uh, an extra um, battery pack well then you'd kind of have to choose do i want extra battery or do i want to go and use the mcn10 now with the z8 you're able to do both at the same time so you're able to basically plug in multiple things at the same uh time and not have to worry about uh i'm gonna have to unplug this to plug in this you get both at the same time chris we've got a very um political question here um so brace yourself we haven't rehearsed, rehearsed this ahead of time guys Aren't the Z7 and Z6 now redundant? What are your thoughts on that, Chris? <laughs> no, no, that's uh, from, from the laughter. From the laughter, I can tell where we're, uh, the, the other guys are thinking on this as well. And the, the answer is no, uh, just purely on price point alone. Uh, not everybody has the money to buy a Z9, which is why we now have the Z8. Not everybody has the money to go and afford the Z8. Some people might want the Z8 and a Z6 as a backup body. So for, for me, um, are they redundant? And the answer is easily no. Um, we still have people who are looking at different price points. We're still looking at people who want different form factors. The Z6 and Z7 are smaller and lighter. So if you do want something that is basically 45 megapixels and the lightest that we have in our lineup, you're still going to gravitate towards the Z7 if you don't need things like the stack sensor provides that the Z8 and the Z9 have. So for me, uh, th th that's an easy no. All right. Now I have a question for you because I've been projecting forecasting based on my understanding of cameras a lot of people have said and based on what we've seen of the actual specifications now chris and well done stacked sensor man i'm, I'm really excited by this but why would i buy why would i spend an extra let's say fifteen hundred dollars us on the z9 if i can get the z8 who is the, so who do you consider <laughs> the z9 to be marketed for and who do you expect the z8 or and who is the z8 marketed towards the Z8, I think, is going to be a little bit more of a everybody type camera. Like, don't get me wrong. The Z9, I think, for anybody who followed it since the launch, when you look at what the Z9 did in terms of sales as a flagship camera, it's a little ridiculous, to be honest with you, how, how many sales we had. And if we look back at what the D6, the D5, the D4, even the D3 did, the Z9 eclipsed them. And I don't think anybody in the market was expecting the camera to do that well, whether it was Nikon, whether it was just uh, regular people just kind of looking at, uh, at, the, at the market. And one of the amazing things about the Z9 is how much of an everyday camera it was. Not obviously, it's a little bit larger than some people want. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But in terms of the overall versatility, uh, whether it's video, whether it's stills, whether it's portraiture sports action landscape like you can literally do anything with it and and now we're taking that knocking some price off and making it even smaller and lighter so i think the z8 is really going to hit a very very nice balance for a lot of people and almost any type of photography or videography that you're going to do you're going to be tempted by the z8 so that kind of leads into 
who would go and purchase a Z9 at this point? And the answer is, it's going to be a little bit of features, but more personal choice. Um, so with the Z8 and the Z9, obviously, feature-wise, uh, you guys were just kind of quickly going through some of the features. I, I don't have an exact percentage of how much of the Z9 is in the Z8. It is very, very high. There's not much that the um, Z9 has that the Z8 doesn't. A few of the things are the PC Sync port. So uh, the when you look at the Z8, it does have the 10-pin port here on the top, but it yep. does not have the PC Sync port that the um, that the Z9 has as well. So, so PC Sync port now, how many of us actually use a PC Sync port day to day? Probably not very many of us. So that's on yeah. kind of the lower end of features, but it still is something that's missing. Uh, we obviously do have built-in GPS with the Z9. Again, not everybody needs that. Personally, I use our SnapBridge app and that just allows me to tag all the metadata directly from my phone. Most users, that's totally fine. But for some, they're really going to like the, the fact that the uh, Z9 has built-in GPS. You have built-in Ethernet with the Z9. Again, that can be beneficial. Are you uh, tethering all the time in a studio? If it's an everyday type occurrence, then to be honest, the Z9, uh, that might make a bit of a difference. Having that built-in, locked-in uh, ability... Now, I will say you can actually get a USB-C adapter, an Ethernet adapter, so you can plug into a you, one of the USB-C ports, uh, plug into Ethernet, so you can still get that functionality, but it just depends on how often you're going to use it. Um, and then, obviously, the biggest one is ergonomics. So, are you a portrait photographer? Well, yes, you may want a lighter and smaller body, but if you're always shooting the portrait orientation, as I'm sure a number of you know, Shooting like this all day long definitely does get tiring. So if you are doing that as your day-to-day -day job and you want the most kind of ergonomic shooting uh, ability, then you may want the vertical shutter, uh, vertical trigger that comes built in with the uh, with the Z9. Plus, to be honest, uh, I don't know how many of you have actually felt the Z9 in the vertical orientation. This is the best feeling camera I've ever shot with. Most of them, they kind of have this weird kind of truncated bottom that isn't totally, this one just feels like it should. So for ergonomic wise, if you are always shooting in the vertical orientation, the Z9 has a big, big uh, improvement. And then to be honest, the last feature, uh, feature I'll say is more of a personal preference. Some people just like the fully integrated grip, whether that's because they want the extra battery life, whether that's because they just want, uh, they, they like the kind of extra durability that comes along with that. There's obviously a number of reasons for it, but having that uh, extra ability to, to have that, uh, that battery life is, uh, is a very nice thing. Oh, thank you. Uh, I'm going to open the panel up to questions as well. Um, I got Chris, one. Well, hold on a second. I have one last question before we open up the panel. Uh, Chris, um, autofocus is one of those things that's always brought up, and it seems to be um, no matter how good autofocus gets, there's always, oh, I wish this would be better. As you've used the Nikon Z8, what can you say are the material differences or improvements in the capabilities of the autofocus system in terms of accuracy, in terms of more subjects and objects that it can track, um, and from the viewpoint of both a videographer and a photographer? Well, I'll say it depends on where you're coming from. So if you're coming from a Z6, Z7 series camera, then the Z8 is is miles ahead. If you're coming from a Z9 and you're looking at it from that point of view, you've already kind of used one of the greatest uh, autofocusing cameras on the market, uh, you will be right at home. So Z8's autofocus is pretty much identical to the Z9. And by pretty much identical, I mean that it now has, uh, within the subject detection uh, options, it still has the nine different subject types that the Z9 has, but we, have, we do have a dedicated airplane mode. We still had and had and have an airplane mode within the Z9, but it's grouped within the vehicle section. So the functionality is still technically the same between the two of them, but you do have a slightly different option with the Z8 in that it has a dedicated airplane mode. But beyond that, whether it's stills, whether it's video, uh, when you're coming from a Z9, you have everything that you would ever want because it's the same as a Z9. If you're coming from a Z6, Z7, you are now getting uh, one of the best cameras on the market in terms of, I heard um, one of you, I forget what you're talking about, um, eye detection and how far away 
uh, some of the kind of wants of a camera. You want to be able to see your subject and have it lock onto the eye as far away as possible. Well, the Z8 and Z9 are one of, if not the best, uh, in terms of at distance. So you're getting that same capability um, with the Z8 as you do the Z9. So it's a big step up from the Z6, Z7. In terms of video capability, you have a lot of customizations that you're able to do, whether it's uh, slowing down the autofocus speed, speeding it up. Uh, you can go and dedicate a button to be a fast autofocus uh, switch so that if you're, let's say, in a busy situation and you suddenly have a new subject come a little bit closer, you don't want that slow focus pull that you've already dialed in. You want it to just quickly jump to a close subject. You can literally have a button dedicated for fast AF and you just hit that, it'll quickly jump to that new subject and then you get back to your normal uh regular autofocus button and it goes back to your slower autofocus that you want to make it look a little bit more cinematic so there's there's a lot that i could go into uh but basically from a z6 z7 this is everything you've wanted if you've been reading about the z9 and if you're custom uh, uh familiar already with the z9 then it's everything you're used to because it is, it is essentially that same autofocus. And before we open it up to the rest of the panel, I will just say there are certain uh, uh, numbers um, that I may not have either off the top of my head or I may not have uh, available to, to share right now. I just, I'll put that out there right now, um, but there's, I'll, I'll answer as much as I can. Well, thank you very much. So I, I just wanna uh, say thank you to uh, Randall. Um, Randy, he just gave us a super chat. And his comment, uh, you might be happy to hear this, Chris, 3996 body only, fantastic. And in Canada, where we live, uh, Chris, 5399, the same price as the Canon EOS R5. And I was saying all along, Chris, that I thought Nikon, knowing Nikon, they're going to, while well, they're going to sit on the same shelf as the R5, the Sony, and the Canon, I believe that your, your direct competitors, the R5, and, um, you know, I, I'm really... I'm impressed with this camera, but now to the panel, I believe Wayne had a question ready. So I wanna take some questions from the panel, but Chris, keep an eye on some of the questions in the chat. They're going by so quickly, I just can't keep up with them. Wayne, you had a question for Chris. Yeah, what I wanted to know, it's, a, it's a basically a baby Z9, but were there any additional improvements that the Z9 doesn't have that this camera received? Um, yeah, so the, the dual USB-C port, that's one of them. Um, another one built within the actual camera itself, we actually have a skin softening feature. So whether that's for stills, which to be honest, I don't know. I know that some people will use it if you're doing a quick event shoot and you need to get your images out right away. You don't want to spend a lot of time uh, going and editing. You may want to go and utilize this function. But the bigger side of things that I think some people may actually utilize it for is on the video side. So it actually works in video as well. So you can go in and soften up to three people's faces all at the same time. And the camera will, will do it all. You can uh, dial it up or down in terms of intensity. Um, but th those are the two, I'll say, biggest differentiators uh let's see if i want to go and think about anything else yeah i think that that's pretty much it the dual usb-c uh does have a slightly different body type so the z9 is a full magnesium alloy chassis the z8 does have a partial magnesium alloy but it's also partial uh we have a, a thermoplastic carbon fiber material that we that we have uh, to utilize to keep the weight a little bit uh, less, but also to help uh, keep the the durability up as well. So the two of those together is the body material of the of the Z8. So it is slightly different, but to be honest, it still feels like a rock. Uh, you would never know it if I uh, if I didn't tell you. And it manages the heat well in that new body. That's one of the questions I had. Yeah. So so yes, it does. Um, when you're recording, uh, so I'll get into the weeds a little bit. So 4K 60p, uh, you still have a two hour and five minute uh, recording time limit, uh, same as the Z9. But most of the, like if you if you ever look at any of the tests of a Z9 or anybody uh, on their, their YouTube channel, or you've played with them yourself, you'll know that with a Z9, that two hour and five minute record limit, it's not there and then you have to stop the camera and restart it again or sorry you stop stop it let it cool down and then restart it again it's basically ready to go right off the bat so with the z8 at 4k and 60p uh you are able to do two hours and five minutes and i've had no overheating issues whatsoever with 8k uh we have dropped the limit down to 90 minutes which is still 
very, very uh, uh, good in terms of what uh, maybe some of the competitors are able to do. Now, I will say that that is in because there is now a temperature um, uh, shutoff feature in the camera. So when you go into the high option of that, you get into 90 minutes. If you're in the regular, the standard temperature, you'll be at 60 minutes for 8K recording. But again, 90 minutes. Uh, and again, I've done some testing, not a, a huge amount because uh, what I'm working with are, are pre-production samples. So I don't always want to go and base what I see with a pre-production sample comparison to a, a full production sample. So I don't want to say for sure uh, based on my testing, but you are getting a 90 minute 8K recording time. Okay, someone else go well, I'll just, that, 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 my, my, yeah. Thank All you right. very much. Now, before I hand it over to Chuck, cause I know Chuck's gonna be chomping at the bit here. Uh, uh, Chris, there <laughs> is one question um, about the stack sensors benefits. So, um, I, you know, Don, Donna asks, can you describe Nikon stack sensor benefits in the Nikon Z8? And I think we ju you just covered off the long, the runtime for video, but yes, yeah, stack sensor benefits. And then Chuck, if you're, if you want to, I'm sure you've probably got a machine gun list of questions that you can take it from there. No, actually, uh, I don't have a list. Uh, I, I'm going to have to get out of here before long, Simon, as I, as we talked about. I've got a live stream today, Chris. I hate to leave you, man. Why don't you come over to my stream as well? I appreciate <laughs> that. Um, and you're welcome to do that if you like. But anyway, everybody's talking about battery life. Okay, so we know it's an EL15. Is there a new uh, model of that? We're at C right now, right? Is there a new battery? No, it is still utilizing the ENL 15 C battery. Okay. So have you, sh I know you've been playing with the camera. So have you actually tested at least somewhat the battery life in the camera rather than the uh, CPU rating? Um, yeah, the, the CPU rating, I don't put any, uh, any, I don't, I don't let that kind of hold hold any water for me because, as we all know, right. the SEPA testing it was really based on on DSLR usage. They let it sit for a certain amount of time and they shoot, and it does give a good indication of let's say how long the camera can last. But in terms of real world shooting conditions, it doesn't actually tell you much at all. So I usually take the number. Uh, of SEPA, at least for our mirrorless cameras. And depending on how you have your camera set up, it's about three to five times that. So, and it again, depends on what you're shooting. If you're shooting landscapes and you're taking one shot and then you're zooming in, you're scrolling through all of your images, you're going back and forth, and then you go and shoot again, your battery usage is going to be, uh, your battery number is going to be quite low. But if you're going and shooting continuous action, if you're shooting sports, uh, when I was going and shooting uh, the, the Z8 actually uh, a little while ago, in a continuous shooting uh, scenario, I was getting between four and a half and five and a half thousand shots off a single battery. So everybody's everybody's battery yeah, everybody's usage gonna is going to be the same. I just wanted bit. to debunk the method or the the you know the SEPA rating because people were really shocked and scared. Tried to liken it to the Z9 and the SEPA rating for the Z9 that everybody was shocked by, and what actual use is. And so anyway, I, 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 I'm. I appreciate you answering that. Uh, one more thing. Have you played with the battery grip for this yet? I have. Yeah. It's right so here. The yes. next question everybody wants to know is, will, uh, oh, no. Oh, there, there we go. Have you, uh, or will it accept the EN EL18? That's the next big question, the battery grip. No, it will not. Uh, so when okay. you when you pop it out, the, the tray is only for two ENL 15 C's or all ENL 15s. Uh, so you would go yeah. and utilize this tray, pop it on in, and it does not have space for an ENL 18. Okay. I know a lot of people were asking that. So I appreciate you answering it. Thank you. Oh, no problem. My wife brought me a plate of food and I have to eat it. So when we cut to Chris, I'm chomping down a little bit. Um, so I, I'll, let me ask this question again regarding, <clears throat> excuse me, I'm, I've got a um, two-hour talking voice. Chris, Stack Center, um, I'd love to hear your thoughts on w what, how does it improve the video and stills capabilities? What is it about the Stack Center that you've noticed in terms of your usage with the camera? 
Uh, that's a loaded question because I could probably <laughs> talk for about an hour and a half just about the stack sensor. Um, one of our one of our guys at the office, I, I had him. He's a whiz at um, uh, at creating three D graphics and uh, and models. So I said, "Are you able to to kind of do this for me?" And he went, "Yeah, no problem." And he pumped up these amazing graphics. So I have an entire presentation just on that. Um, but I'll, I'll say quickly. On the video side, it really mostly comes down to uh, the, 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 the jello effect of the rolling distortion you'll see. Um, that's going to be heavily minimized with a stack sensor. On the still side, there's a number of different things and they all kind of interchange. So one of them obviously is roll and shutter uh, as well. So if you are shooting with a full electronic shutter with conventional sensors when you have very fast action whether it's uh let's say you're shooting outside of a train you're you're on the train you're shooting outside the telephone poles would be angled with a conventional sensor or if you're shooting uh fast action even um there's shots that i've seen of let's say a baseball player with a bat bent at a really really weird angle so for some sport shooters let's say who shoot golf you're not allowed to shoot on the backswing of any golfer when at a pro tournament but you want that shot because you want that contact well so when you shoot silent mode with a conventional sensor an r5 an a7r mark 5 you are going to get these rolling shutter distortions and that's just not going to give you the full versatility of your camera with the z9 and now the z8 um the readout of the sensor of our, our of our stack sensor is essentially equivalent to the speed of a mechanical shutter and because of that, you're essentially getting the same. And I say the same because I never say that there's no rolling shutter because even a mechanical shutter does have some rolling shutter, but it's so minimal that you would never really see it. So um, what I'll say is the electronic shutter mode of a Z9, Z8 is essentially the same as a mechanical shutter of a regular uh, Nikon mirrorless or, or DSLR. So because of that, you're able to shoot in full silent mode in situations that you normally wouldn't be able to, whether it's golf, whether it's uh, you're shooting under LED lighting situations where you would maybe get banding with other cameras, with other conventional censored cameras, you won't with a, uh, a Z8 or a Z9 any more than you would with a DSLR. So those are the major features, the non-banding, uh, the lack of distortion, uh, th those are the things that you're really going to notice. But when you tie that in together with our X Speed 7 processor and you put things like the um, uh, our dual stream technology, because the readout of the sensor is so fast, we're actually able to go and the Z8 and Z9 are the only ones on the, on the market that actually have what we call dual stream. So every other camera on the market has a feed from the sensor to the actual processor itself and then the evf obviously needs information so they essentially has to steal information from that single feed and that's going to usually uh result in uh repeating frames you also you almost see a stuttering even if you don't have uh blackout per se you'll usually see, see some form of stuttering or repeating frames um with the z8 and the z9 you have a dedicated feed from the sensor to the processor but you also have another feed directly from the sensor to the evf so you're not having to steal information from one to the other it's basically a dedicated feed to both at the same time and while that's not necessarily just due to the stack sensor it's definitely a huge huge part of it and then you throw on the hugely powerful uh x 7 processor as well and that kind of enables that whole process to be uh to be allowable i guess so so well long story short there, there's a lot about buffering <laughs> then what about buffering with the one cf express and one sd card how comparable is it to what we get in the z9 with the almost a limitless buffer so i don't that's one of the fee the 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 numbers that i don't have available to to actually share um in my testing under using because uh, obviously um only particular cards will allow you to reach that unlimited un unlimited um limitless buffer of the z9 whether it's a pro grade cobalt the delkin black series um there's only a few out there that can actually reach that so using those cards with the z8 i've gotten very i've gotten hundreds of shots 
Um, but I don't know that it's exactly the same as the Z9, but you're still going to like, I was doing testing yesterday. I got like 350 or so uh, with a Delkin Black Series card and a Pro Grade Cobalt card before it started to slow down. And that was at the, uh, the high efficiency star mode. So okay. I, I don't have that exact number for you, but running off of my test with a pre-production sample, um, I'm still getting hundreds of shots when you use the right card. When you talk about now SD cards, your buffer is obviously going to be much smaller, but that right. kind of comes with the territory of, of a much slower uh, write speed. If I recall, um, and this was from Angel Bird's test when they tested for their new MK2 cards, the Nikon Z9 shooting lossless raw 20 frames per second, 45.7 megapixels generated a stream, continuous stream. Uh, it's just phenomenal thinking about this data. 1.2 gigabytes per second or 1,200 megabytes per second. So uh, <clears throat> you, not any CF Express Type B card will work in that case. Some have a, a lot slower speeds, but I know that the Angel Bird, they go as fast as 1.48 gigabytes per second. And you can get them for as low as $130 US for the um, 160 gig. And they go all the way up to like 1.3 gigabytes. But yeah, sorry. Um, you know what? I, let me give uh, Kevin a chance because Kevin, you must have some questions and you've been awfully quiet. I've been ignoring Kevin and James. So questions for uh, Chris, Kevin. Um, my, my question really, um, <clears throat> really only revolved around the, the grip itself and then also um, the autofocus, which both of those questions are already answered. Um, but I think that it would probably make room for maybe a firmware update in the near future for the, um, Z9. Uh, however, I wanted to piggyback off of John Drummond's question actually, uh, that was in the chat and that was any focus, uh, br any focus breathing compensation or a pixel shift for the latter raw or JPEG. I don't know if that question was uh, answered or not. No, I, I haven't uh, I've been, been asked that before. So uh, no, there is no focus breathing compensation or pixel shift uh, available in the uh, in the Z8. Okay, okay. Okay, so my follow-up question. Yeah, and, 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 actually, and actually, sorry, sorry. Uh, I'm just going to jump in. So selective imagery actually answered how I was going to. If you are using an S-line lens, ch the chances of you having focus breathing is going to be so minimal anyways. But if you're using, a, let's say, an older F-mount lens or a non- uh, Nikon lens, if you're using an adapter, um, then no, we, we don't have uh, uh, focus compensation. So my follow-up, okay. Chris, is any planned firmware updates to bring those capabilities to the Z8? Uh, as of right now, your guess is as good as mine. Uh, you'll be you'll be checking Nikon rumors, I'm sure, to see what the what the next <laughs> thing that they're going to be talking about the Z8 is. Um, so so to to be totally honest, um, yeah, there for those. We, we haven't made anything um, uh, public about us going and working on those. I'm, I would like to think that uh, with the amount of times we get asked about it, that our engineers are working on it. But in terms of if it'll actually happen or any time frame for it, uh, I don't know. All right, uh, James. Hey, how's it going, Chris? Um, so to sort of uh, continue on the media car slot, um, in terms of video options, what are the limitations in terms of the SD cards, in terms of recording options, and what is only available in the CF Express Type B card slot? Uh, so that is another one that I do not have uh, full, uh, full access to the info just yet. Um, so I can't actually answer it. I... I'm going to guess that some of the 8K options, well, I'll say any of the any of the raw options for sure are going to be CF Express Type B only. Uh, when it comes to 10 bit, uh, that even I'm not 100% sure on. So I don't have that info just yet, but I will say raw guaranteed. I cannot see any way that they'll be able to get that on, on the SD. 10 bit possibly, um, and then any of the resolution sizes, I, I'm not 100% sure right now. Okay. Um, the other thing I wanted to ask is, um, cause obviously this is your, this is sharing a lot of the characteristics of the Z nine and when you guys, so I guess when the Z nine with this camera and then I guess with also the Z nine, when those were built, what type of video shooters were you guys thinking of when you decided to, uh, 
create the video the video features with the Z9, but now the Z8? Was it sort of where you're looking at sort of more like people that do a lot of event work? Were you looking for something, especially with the Z? I guess it would be more the Z8, but travel videos. What, who were the people that you, what was sort of the type of video shooters you had in mind when it came to creating the Z9 and with its video features? I would say that when it comes to the Z9, when we came out with it, our the one of the one of the great things about where we kind of sit in the video market um and i know that there's a lot of things that that you wish we would do better at but one of the nice things about us in the video market is we don't have a venice system we don't have a uh a, a, basically an overhead looking up going oh i don't want to go and steal that that product line so we were able to essentially throw a lot of features in there and while i know that there's still some other things that some people definitely want um so there's always room for improvement. I think with the Z9, this was a, we're really aiming to get it into as many people's hands as possible. We know that this is not going to be used on uh, a, a full, um, full blown movie production as the, as the A camera. We know that we, there's, there's other reasons that other people are going to go and grab, whether it's the Venice, whether it's uh, other, other very high end uh, red cameras. So we know that we're not necessarily stealing that, with the Z9 or the Z8, but like you said, the event shooter um, with the Z8, maybe the, the documentary as well, when you want a smaller rig that still has a fully functioning uh, internal recording system, you're not limited to anything. You can record 8K 60p raw internal. You can go and do ProRes raw up to 4.1K. You can go and do 10-bit uh, N-Log or HLG all in camera. So having a fully featured camera while having it be smaller, even a, I'll, I'll say, I'll even call the Z9 smaller uh, in terms of uh, what else is maybe uh, uh, out there available for those feature sets. Um, so I'll say for both of the cameras, it was event shooters, it was documentary style. Uh, for definitely, as you said, that the travel for, for the Z8, because it is even smaller and lighter. Uh, music videos, that's something that you always want to be a little bit more um, uh, nimble with. So anything on the smaller scale, I think, was our goal because we know that we're starting off at a disadvantage. That's that's one of the things that we're we're very open with. We know that there's work to do in terms of us being in the video sphere. Uh, our S-line lenses are amazing, but not everybody's used them. And I'll say that a lot of video shooters, it's very different than in the than in the the, the camera side of things. Camera people, whether you're uh, Nikon, whether you're Canon, whether you're Sony, Fuji, Olympus, it doesn't matter. You usually have your eyes open to what else is out there. So I know most of you don't shoot Nikon, but you're obviously here very well versed in the Nikon world. Most video shooters, though, they kind of stay in their own little sphere. And I'm not saying that is a bad thing, but it just it seems to be that's the way that they that they kind of function is if if you're a Sony video shooter, if you're a Canon video shooter, if you're a Panasonic video shooter, you just kind of stay in your own little world and you you know what works for you, you know what lenses, you know your kind of ecosystem, and that is your world. You don't really tend to kind of push out beyond it very often, but now that the Z8 and the Z9 have things like waveform uh, built in, we have full zebra, we have better audio, 24-bit linear PCM. So there's there's all these little things that on the video side we're including in these cameras. I think it is going to kind of tempt a lot more people out there, but we are starting small. We're not expecting this to be used on full uh, big budget movies as the as the A camera, but maybe as we add more and more features into them, uh, maybe we'll we'll get there at some point. Who knows? I'm sorry. Did you say waveform built in, Chris? Yeah. Yep. Uh, but so the Z9 has that, and the Z8 has it as well. Sorry, I, I, I just need a moment. I'm getting emotional here. <laughs> Waveforms in the camera. Kenan, are you listening? <laughs> and no 30-minute record limit, and you're using Type-B cards. Um, so that brings me to a question from Peter Gregg. Um, the R5C does have that, Simon, too. This, so, sorry, the what, R5C what? does have all the, the R5C, the Canon R5C, I know this is Nikon, and I'm not trying to, I just no. want to... <laughs> no, you're free, but, free, uh, free they, to talk about the competition, because look... I mean, there's no surprises here that this channel covers everything. I happen to own a Canon. Now, Chris, I was telling this story early on. The reason why I shoot with Canon is not because I think they're the best that, you know, anything like that. It's because 
many decades ago, my brother was just out there with his camera and I was using silly point and shoots. And I said to him, you know, I'm thinking of getting a camera because I saw the results and I said, what do you recommend? He shot Canon, so guess what he recommended? A Canon, and once you get into the ecosystem, you start buying lenses, for better or worse, you generally stay with the brand. I'm not, you know, I, I don't switch. I would love to have, um, like a Z8, I would love to have an S5 Mark II. I would love to have uh, what I consider to be the best segmented cameras from each company represented on the channel, but... You know, every time I do that, it's like a $10,000 investment. But the, the, the question that Peter asks, um, and, and I already checked, um, I was looking at Adorama, and already there's already five people that have pre-ordered, and probably B&H, there's a bunch of people who have pre-ordered the Nikon Z8. So um, they're flying off the shelves. I was talking to, I, I do a lot of my shopping at Downtown Camera in Toronto, and um, I was told there's a huge amount of demand there. So the big question is... Um, do you guys have a better supply for the Z8 launch? And can you give us an idea in terms of how much you have available today versus the Z9? Do you have similar issues in scaling that up in terms of meeting the demand of this camera, which I'm sure you already understand there's going to be a huge demand for it? Absolutely. When when we internally started to see what the Z9 was going to, to offer in terms of features and then you add that in with, oh, and this is going to be the price of it. Uh, we kind of sat back and went, oh, oh, this could be very big. Um, so, so internally, we are very well aware that that this camera is going to be incredibly popular. Uh, there's a lot of pent up demand, whether you're already a Z user or whether you've kind of been holding on to your DSLRs. Are you a D850, even a D810 user? Uh, heck, a lot of uh, flagship D5, D6 users have already been thinking about the Z9, but maybe they want a smaller form factor of it. So we, we know that there's going to be a lot of demand. And uh, I will say we definitely will be better for supply. Uh, in terms of numbers, in terms of uh, uh, when we're actually shipping, I don't actually have that information. It will be uh, probably end of May, early June. Uh, so I don't have that exactly. But I will say in terms of numbers, we will definitely be better off. Than, uh, than with the Z9. There is not going to be the year, year and a bit wait that some people unfortunately, and uh, I, we trust me, we were getting those cameras out as fast as we could, um, but you definitely will not have that with the Z8. I can, I can guarantee that. Simon, you're muted. Thank you for that. So they're getting ready to walk out the door for school. Then it's going to be quiet. Uh, first of all, anyone, I want to do a shout out to Sennheiser because um, for better or worse, and you guys will be the judge here, I'm using the Sennheiser profile. This is $199 US. I'm not paid to say this, but I did promise them that you know for the entire 2023, all my live streams, I would use this microphone. With the boom arm, mic, everything to connect, this thing is... $199, $129 for just the microphone and um, a stand. And I think it's pretty good. So I, I, a few times I've pressed the mute, but the rest of that, my wife has been cooking breakfast right behind this wall. My son, who's eight or nine now, running around and jumping, he's been all over the place. And, um, you know, if you didn't really notice that or you heard a few things, it gives you an idea of the, the quality of the microphone. Okay, so, um, yeah, going back to the R5, I remembered how that thing was just impossible to find. I also recall that there was a whole bunch of DSLR owners that weren't interested in anything else that Canon had. And I think I'm, if I'm not, I think if I'm correct here, there's a lot of people still not on the Z mount that are looking, they're still on the F mount. They were waiting for uh, like a mirrorless version of the D850. They were looking for something higher than a Z6 or a Z7. And I, I, I get a sense that this camera is the perfect storm for Nikon, um, Chris. We, we hope so. <laughs> I, I sense so. Look, I already see this. This live stream that I'm doing here this morning, and yes, no, you can put the dog down. Liam wants, my son wants to make a bit of a guest appearance here. So let's just, <laughs> there you go. Okay, you can go to school now. Daddy, keep working. There you go. Um, and uh, now I forgot my thought. What was I saying, Chris? Uh, you were talk. I was, I was, I was looking at the at the dog. I, I wasn't See? paying attention. <laughs> Dogs do this to us. It was, it was something about the the, the R five and getting it ready. You were talking uh, about the, the DSLR, the people that yes, were still yes. holding out. 
So the pent up demand for the camera and I get a sense, I have no doubt that for Nikon, this is going to be a huge seller. Um, as a Canon EOS R5 owner for three years that does studio work, but also does run and gun video work that shoots the still side of this. When I first bought this camera, now I'm going to shift over to the Z8 with the same capabilities as the R5, but better in terms of some of those video specifications. You know, if I was to hold these side by side and don't crucify me, guys. This is just the opinion of a content creator. But if I was having to choose today between the R5 and the Nikon Z8, it would be a very tough decision. Sure, I could spend a whole lot less and get the R5 because Canon's discounting the living daylights out of it because that's part of Canon's competition to try and grab some of the limelight while this is on. But I look at 8K up to 60 frames per second, a stacked sensor, under $4,000 US, 53.99 Canadian, about 6,900 Australian dollars. I look at the video and still its capabilities, and you know I know that whoever buys this camera, even if you're a Z50 person or a Z6 person, thinking, if I buy this camera, am I really good for the next 10 years? And I can say now, having a channel with a camera like this, whether you're stills or video, I have no doubt that this is the type of camera that's going to grow. You're going to be able to stick with for 10 years. And I think all those different markets coming together, Chris is just going to make this a top seller. So, um, you know, well done. And Nikon, thank you for listening. This is, I'm pretty impressed. And Chuck has left the room, so I was going to let Chuck chime in here. Um, but uh, in terms of weather sealing, and I think Nikon calls it um, something different, but uh, in terms of weather sealing, how is the Z8 different from the Z9? Uh, well, the D, so the, the, our flagship cameras have always been a slight step uh, above not necessarily in the quality of the actual uh seals itself we we obviously have full gasket seals around all the major ports on the z8 as well as the z9 but it comes down to little things like where is the battery located on the um uh, on the z9 or even a d6 so be, being able to pull it out of the bottom there's very little chance of water being able to pool in this area so very little things like if you are under full standard water just where the battery is located, how the door is is kind of fit, where the location of all that is, that does change the weather ceiling just slightly. So we we say just to kind of be as as careful as possible. Uh, the D five, the D six, the Z nine, they are usually a slight step above. Um, our Z eight, our official line, is that it's the same weather ceiling capability as the D eight fifty. Whether that means that it's inferior to the z9 in everything i've seen um and everything i've used because i've used this in a few downpours over the last little while um i have no issues whatsoever taking it out into the cold it is still rated to the same uh negative 10 degrees uh celsius that the uh, z9 is but that's actually more due to the fact that we removed the mechanical shutter because the mechanical shutter is a very very complex piece of machinery that it does have its own rating in terms of what it can be used down to and even though uh, don't get hung up on the zero degrees of a Z6 or a minus 10 of a Z8, Z9. You can use the cameras well below that. It's just in a very, very... Basically, if all if the, if the, all the internals of the camera are at minus 10, which mm -hmm. never actually happens because the sensor is turned on, the EVF is turned on. So though that, that rating is good in that it's better than before, but don't take that as the, oh my God, I can't take this to minus 12 degrees Celsius. Don't worry about that. You absolutely can. Uh, I, I've got to comment on that, too, because it, it falls back to material sciences. And no matter what name is on the camera, you have to deal with certain fundamental laws of physics when it comes to materials. Uh, and, you know, you can shoot minus 40, too, but you have to prepare the gear differently. You have to keep it heated. You can't just go outside and expect everything to work. Your batteries are going to function differently. The camera is going to function differently. Uh, both you and I, Chris, and many of the... Um, uh, panelists here, as well as a lot of people watching, do live in what are classified as extreme climates. So that's good news. All right, questions from the panel before I go back to questions from the audience. We're still, look at this, we're, we're what, how many hours in now? What does uh, Ecamm say? Two hours in, and we still have, we're still pulling uh, 450 concurrent views. So, um, and Chris, I, I didn't have a chance to say thank you. I reached out to Chris a while ago because I and I was very careful how I worded the question because um, 
Nikon isn't going to say anything until the event. And I knew that just by what was leaking and by what was being said that everything was tightened up. So I sent, I had a sent an email saying that, you know, I know you can't say anything, but you know, it'd be really helpful to my channel. This is what I had planned for the live stream. If after the embargo is lifted, if I could have somebody with hands on to join. And um, then this morning, there's this email from Chris saying, hey, if you send me the link, we can join. So I appreciate that because it's really helpful. And while some would say, well, it's not an unbiased, that's fine. It's still getting it from the, you know, I'm not trying to say you're a horse, but the horse's mouth. We're getting something that's credible and then from somebody that hands on. So I really do appreciate that. And I know the audience does as well. Chuck, um, back to you, my friend. You, you, what questions do you have? Well, I really don't have another question right now. I, I want to add to what you're saying. Thank you so much, Chris, for being in here, because I know that's what's holding the audience is somebody with hands on. So thank you. And I want to thank uh, James for, you know, him being in here as well. And, and uh, Kevin, for your perspective, uh, being a cannon shooter, by the way, uh, and, and all respect to you, too. So. Thank you, Simon. And I don't know how much longer I'm going to be in here. I've got so much to do. I mean, concerning uh, the stream that's coming up today. So, uh, you know, I, I'll say my goodbyes. I'm not leaving at the minute, you know, at the moment, but uh, I will be bailing out here soon. And thanks for everybody that's in the chat. I mean, there's some fantastic chat going on over there, Simon. Yeah. And uh, I, I, even after I leave the stream, I will be answering some of the chat because I'll be sitting here at the computer getting everything ready for my stream as well. And again, Chris, if you're not busy this afternoon, I will have a live stream that will go on forever. So, <laughs> and, and if you literally join, forever, <laughs> yes, you are more than welcome to jump into that and answer questions there as well. But I'm sure you're getting tired of it, and I'm sure you have other streams and things that you've been invited to today. So, thank you again. Thanks, Simon. This has been fantastic so far. I told you it was going to be fun, and I'm British, I'm dual Canadian and British. And one thing we British generally don't do is overstate things. Um, I've had to work hard to be a bit more of a personality for YouTube because otherwise if I do everything deadpan, it's just I'm going to get crickets chirping most of the time. Um, we will go as long as there is interest. Or, um, Chris, you probably have a hard stop time too. I should have asked you. What is your hard stop time? Uh, my, my hard stop time was about 8.45, so I'm a little <laughs> bit beyond it. I can I can go till about 9.10. So, so I can go, I can answer a few, few more questions. I'll say 9.10 is, uh, is good. Well, first of all, again, Chris, I want to say this publicly. I do appreciate your support. Um, you know, this this is kind of a big deal for me. I'm, what, just about 50 subscribers away from 40,000. And um, it means a lot to me that everybody's watching, that that's tuning in. But to have Nikon Canada say, you know what? I know you're a rumor site and everything, but we, um, we're more than happy to come on and discuss our camera. Um, I am never one of those sites that, is us versus them. It's about attacking a camera. I will tease certain companies um, for not having 30 minute record limits, not going to type BCF Express cards, things like that, because I feel it helps improve. I will not attack for the sake of it. And, uh, you know, it, 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 I just want to say thank you very much. So I'm not going to waste any more time rambling. Um, any other questions from the panelists before I get a few more questions from the lobby? Uh, I don't I just have any other questions. Give because any other questions I might have, I already know Chris is going to say I can't talk about it. So uh, I'll. <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm good. I was I'm glad to. I appreciate I appreciate that restraint. I love that. Yeah. Well, so, then I, I'm not I'm I, not going to have restraint for this really quick. Then I <laughs> I just saw a question in the chat. I don't know if if you can't answer it, Chris. I totally respect that. Is there a hint for a 200 to 600? Um, the hint for the 200 to 600 is on our website in that it is there on, on the future, uh, roadmap, but that's all we can say in terms of a hint as to when it will come out or the features or anything else that you actually want information on. Unfortunately, no. That's, and my source has right. just told me I'll that the Nikon it. is going to, no, I wish, I wish. <laughs> <laughs> And, and you know what, Chris? I gotta say that. The 200 is out now. I'm just 
<laughs> I, I love doing news and rumors. Um, you might not be aware of this, but I have a day job as an enterprise architect. I also teach uh, strategic ESL as a side job as well. Um, I can't sit in front of the TV in my spare time and just watch. I have to. My mind's always active. And so what covering news and rumors allows me to do is get hyped up. I really love technology, especially camera, anything to do with video graphics. I, I just love it. I there's, I wish I had real talent like some of the photographers and ambassadors that you guys have. But I really, really do enjoy doing this. And it only takes me, I think a video I put out yesterday took me 30 minutes from shooting to uploading. It was only about six minutes long. And I love that. I love that excitement. Uh, when I do reviews of products, it usually takes me 30 plus hours. And I realize that until I retire, I can't review products. And usually what I do for like the R5 or whatever it is I get, I use it day in and day out. So then I can talk to people about my experience, different tripods, memory and such. So um, yeah, it's, 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 really, it's really been fun covering the Z8. The leaks have been very interesting. Uh, I'm impressed with how has Nikon kept this a secret. Um, like I, the leaked photos, most of them were fake, the, a lot of the pricing, but you, I was expecting at least last night or the day before we would have a full set of leaked specifications like we do with other companies. How has Nikon kept this such a secret? The details. Well, based on based on based on some of the rumors on Nikon, uh, on Nikon rumors, I, I would say that we didn't do a great job. <laughs> that we could that we could actually do a better job in the future. Um, we're we're just internally we we know that there's uh, we we try and keep it as safe as possible uh, when it comes to uh, getting the camera into into external hands, whether it's for example launch photos videos, we just keep that to a minimal. We keep that to people that we trust that we that we have relationships with, and that's really all we can do is to is to hope that uh, the the information does not get out. It still does, but we just try and keep it minimized. Well, I think what was key here, because you're right, a lot was on Nikon rumors, but because of, um, I forgot what the CIA used to call this, uh, disinformation. Because of the disinformation, even up till yesterday, I was less sure whether the specs were valid because all the photos and the pricing was just all over the place. And I honestly said that I hope we don't get a full letter of validated leak specification saying this is 100% because as... I want to know more. That's part of my channel. But at the same point, I love the excitement of doing a live stream here. We, I don't know how many people we had concurrent leading up to the announcement, but it was definitely over 800, almost 900. And I love that excitement at building a community. So I want to say thank you very much for joining us here on The Ordinary Filmmaker. I would love to be able to do this for future products. And I'd certainly like to stay in touch. And then maybe one of these days, as I get a little bit bigger, closer to 100,000, I could have a Z8 or a Z8 Mark II on this channel because um, I, I, want to, I don't want people to say, oh, he's just a Canon person. I want people to realize that, no, I love when companies put their best foot forward. I love when they are proud of what they deliver, and I want to understand what their intentions are of a product. And I also want to be able to share that with the audience, and that, to me, is an awful lot of fun as I'm starting to lose my voice. So I'm going to let you go two minutes earlier. Chris, is there anything you want to say before you leave? Um, honestly, the biggest thing I would say is get out and go to any events that we're holding here in Canada, in the U.S., uh, any of the launch events, get out and actually get the camera in your hand because one of the things, and this kind of goes, goes along with uh, the rumors beforehand of, I like it because I see the excitement, but I don't like it because it gets people... The, if the camera doesn't have 60 megapixels or 80 megapixels or 100 megapixels, it's now a fail because people have kind of riled themselves up a little bit. Uh, one of those things that I that I hear all the time about, well, have been hearing all about the, uh, the Z8 is it absolutely needs the highest resolution EVF. Now, do not get me wrong. If it had a higher resolution, that is never a bad thing. But what I say to those people is get out and try the camera. And obviously I want people to, to get out and feel how comfortable it is, but go and look at this EVF. Uh, Wayne, you, you shoot with a Z9, is that correct? Wayne has oh, yeah. left us. 
Yeah. We use, he's no, I, okay. I, I can answer that. He He's shooting with a A7R5 right now, but he is a former Nikon shooter, and he got to play with the Z9 and fell in love with all the video in it because he's a video shooter. So he was really interested in the Z8 uh, announcement to see what it brought to the table. I think it's fair to say he's happy because he was happy with the <laughs> Z9. And, uh, you know, well, here you go. It's it's a Z9 in a smaller form factor. So, and of course, at a more affordable price. So, but I, I want to say one thing, Chris. What does this mean for the Z9 now? Deep thoughts. <laughs> he went for the coffee. It, yeah, yeah I, went, I went for the coffee. Um, the, the Z9 is, is obviously still here. It's still going to be... Um, uh, still going to be our flagship camera if you want the best of the best in terms of overall build and battery and overall pure functionality. That's still it's still in our lineup, so it's not going anywhere. Well, I didn't expect you to answer it. So, uh, uh, you know, w one of the things about uh, representatives is they can't uh, speculate for the corp corporation and they can't speak against the corporation. So uh, anyway, thank you very much. Uh, but I, I think we can all see the writing on the wall sooner rather than later. And I'll just leave it at that. So uh, again, Chris, uh, thank you very much for your time. It means an awful lot to me. And I say that sincerely. Um, and enjoy the rest of today. I love what Nikon did with a long extended presentation. Um, I've got a lot of reading and watching to do and I got to get to my local camera store so I can actually put the camera in hand. But thank you very much, Chris. No problem, guys. Uh, yep, I'm off to, uh, to see a bunch of dealers today to do a bunch of other live streams later on tonight. So it's going to be a busy but very, very exciting day. And I'm glad I could join you all today. Thank you, Chris. Have a good day. Thanks. Chris. Thanks for your time. Chris. Thank you. And guys, it's a blue sky day out there. I'm looking out my window here. I've got a great office here. It's it's a big room. I, if I was in an office tower, I would be the president and CEO of a large company to get a view like this. The tree, the leaves are just coming out on it. I can see the green. I can see the blue. I do want to get out there and enjoy it eventually. But this has been an exciting day. I mean, I, let me just cover some of the stats. So first of all, I've got uh, 39,955 subscribers now, so thank you. Uh, I know I will have that 40,000 even if I don't do it during this stream. But just looking at the stream stats here, over 5,300 views in this two-hour broadcast. That's wow. pretty good. I've never had a broadcast with that many views sustained. We've got as many as, I don't see the stats here, but I know it was somewhere close to 900 concurrent at any one time watching. That is the biggest and a bunch of super chats for about 53 Canadian dollars. So I, I thank you for that too. I, I'm just really excited to be able to share today with you. It is kind of a national holiday here, a Nikon day, I guess. And uh, to be able to have James and uh, Chuck and Kevin here as we discuss this. Um, Chuck, I know you, when, when is your live stream? Tell us about your live stream because it's coming up soon, I believe. Yeah, I dropped it in the chat over there talking to some other folks. Uh, it starts at 12 noon Eastern today. I'm not going to start it earlier. I, I had thought about that, but I'm going to leave it at 12 noon because I have a feeling we're going to go for a while. And uh, this chair gets awful hard to sit in for that many hours. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, anybody that would like to come over to AP Studios and talk about it, we're going to talk about it quite a bit more. And uh, thank you, Simon, for putting my little chart up there. This was done back in June last year. That doesn't mean that's when I started talking about this, but I decided in June to uh, drop down the chart. That's my uh, speculation for where Nikon's going. And, uh, hey, I got to tell you, I'm extremely happy with uh, where I was in that chart and being a little bit conservative, but it looks like everything's coming to fruition. So that's my way ahead for Nikon. I don't know if Nikon uh, sees it the same way, but here we go. We're, well, your we're on audience the does. Now. You got uh, monetized just uh, last month. You're, you're over a thousand subscribers now, 1.07 now. You keep growing. You're, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you're, uh, uh, you're delivering we're something. You the yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, um, I'm delivering something. We'll leave it at that. <laughs> no, you're delivering something valuable, right? And so, uh, I, I, that's why I, I don't always come on your channel because honestly, I am so busy, 
Um, thanks to Nikon releasing a product today, I can now actually relax a little bit, but now I bet you Canon's gonna start. See, this is what Canon does, right? They lowered the price just before the announcement once Nikon started dominating the news cycle. And I bet you they're gonna come out with a firmware update soon. Don't expect any major, cinema maybe, but don't expect any major stills hybrid cameras anytime soon. But, yeah, Panasonic, I mean, and Panasonic made the release video for the S5 Mark II X yesterday yep. too. So this is a, this is an interesting week of camera announcements. I'm glad you, I'm glad you said that, uh, Simon about Canon, because I still got a while to say for that R5 Mark II or R1. So <laughs> I, still, well, I still got a while. This is where you know, I want to. So, wanna... so, so, but soon you'll just realize, oh, R5 II, I can just get the R5C and I'll, I'll get, get right, the same features. Right, right. <laughs> so what I'm doing here is I'm no going to go through each of the, um, the ones here. So look, sorry, I lied about the price. It's 39.96.95. Um, you lied? I lied. But look, you know what? The, the leaks were almost identical. There was one that didn't have the Z like this, but you know what? It looks very, very similar. And of course, over at B&H, and I can tell already just looking at my pre-order links, um, people that have bought in the last, and this is delayed by a few hours, but I've already got about one, two, three, how many people have pre-ordered? This is just on Adorama. They, they are up to the, almost up to the hour. B&H can take days. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, Oh my God, nine pre-orders wow. on my channel from just Adorama. So you can imagine B&H, they're big as well. This, as a leading indicator, I've never ever had that many of any model of any price. So this is a big seller. This is popular. And you know what? And thank you, JM Hunter. I appreciate that. This is a, this is um kind of a... Um, uh, as, as I keep doing this, I keep experimenting. One thing I got to realize is to figure a way to get the audio passed through from the browser to the presentation because that's not, doesn't seem to be working out very well, but um, uh, it's just, it, it, it's, it's, it's a top seller and I'm excited and I'm just, I really would like to get this camera in hands, but I, I don't, and, you know, I wish I, one thing I would have wanted to say to Chris is, you know, the rumors people get disappointed because there's no this and that, but you know, once it's announced, people are still going to say, I'm not buying it. It doesn't have dual cards. I'm not buying it. Right. It doesn't have 61. Right. I'm not. I, I, I ignore that. Uh, well, I don't ignore that. I mean, I understand people have definite needs, but a lot of times you'll see it doesn't have this. I'm done. Okay, well, that's not how you make well, business it definitely, decisions. It definitely well, put uh, the rest. I, I the, the, go ahead, no, man. You go, go ahead. You go, go ahead. No, I was going to say, it, say uh, it definitely. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. Kevin, you have the floor. Uh, it definitely. It, it definitely put to rest uh, the whole um, notion that it was going to be like forty five hundred to five thousand dollars. That's for sure. Well, see, the reason why I nail these things is not because I'm a clairvoyant individual. Um, I do remote sensing or viewing or whatever it's called. It's because I do what Nikon and Canon do. I, you look at what they currently have on the market, what its price is, how many years has it been since they've done an update, what is the competition doing. And with Nikon, it was easy because we already had the market established by the R5 and the A7R5 in the mirrorless segment. So it was very easy to predict where it should be. And with stack sensor, I said anywhere from $39.99 up to $42.99 without $33.99 all the way up to $39.99. And you know what? It was bang on right where I kind of expected it to be. People said the same thing about the R5. There's no way this camera is going to cost less than eight grand, seven grand, six grand. Well, no, they won't sell, right? James, it's your floor. Take it away. Okay. <laughs> Sorry well, about that, James. <laughs> no, no, it's all right. No, that's totally fine. Um, no, yeah. Look, I was one of those people that was saying, they were, like, how is this going to be under eight thousand dollars? But that was given the features that Canon had had with their cinema line accounts, but that's an old thing. Uh, I wanted to sort of go more into the idea of it doesn't have these features and so I'm not going to buy it. And to me, it's just like, I, everybody has their own thing and has every shooter is different. Whether if you are a, a still shooter or a video shooter, everybody, even within those brackets, somebody's different. And at the end of the day, you got to pick and choose a camera that fits 
your needs. So if it's somebody says, hey, it doesn't have dual car slot, I need to make sure I have redundant recording in high, at the highest resolutions, I totally get it. I'm a type of person, for me personally, it's sort of like, I'm looking for a camera that can offer a lot of recording options in terms of DCI 4K, 4K video features, video center features. I've went through all that. But more particularly, like today, I'm still pursuing a camera that can give me a good solid 3-2 video recording with a good quality codec. Now, in terms of the, uh, the mirrorless hybrid market, there really isn't a camera there yet. The closest was probably the Fuji X-H2S. But there's a couple cinema cameras that are now starting to come out from some Chinese companies that look like that may address that. And the reason why is because I want to have an ability to shoot in multiple formats that I could deliver. So I can shoot 16 by 9 for YouTube, but then I can shoot video resolutions, but still have the vertical real estate and then deliver those for shorts on YouTube or for IGs and just having that format and being able to be quick, fast, and nimble. Uh, a special thanks to photo me, Ike, um, <laughs> a, a long time subscriber. Thank you so much for the $20 super chat. Um, I do appreciate it. Um, you know what? Um, and awesome goes to everybody who participated. You have no idea how much work I spent over the last two weeks trying to get people to show up for the after embargo date. I was, I was trying to get uh, Chris and Jordan and it looked like it might've been possible, but you know, they've got a busy itinerary uh, working with Dan Watson, trying to get him. And even Craig from Canon Rumors said, I want to show up, but then his family planned something for him and he couldn't show up. But um, you know, it's, this is not the work of one person. And of course, all the questions like, I, I, I can't believe this. I mean, even now we're just kind of the post post after show and we're just kind of rambling our thoughts and oh thank you for the thumbs down so three thumbs down that's fine it's still feedback i don't take it in a negative way but if you're going to give a thumbs down also give a comment saying what could be better right because i have been doing this for three and a half years and i listen to feedback i improve on things and you know people who will give a negative comment with a good criticism you know i'm willing to take that and i love it so thank you for thank you ike chuck i i'm just we're here. Can you believe it? We're here. No, no. I, 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 I told somebody last night, I made a comment on uh, somebody's uh, post or video. And I said, I'm just emotionally exhausted right now. <laughs> or mentally exhausted, not emotionally. I got plenty of rant left, but uh, mentally exhausted <laughs> with everything building up to this. And, you know, and I have been very defensive with people that have, uh, you know, come up with all these crazy ideas of what Nikon will do, won't do, and how bad they'll do and everything else. And I, I'm just ready to sit back and and, and relax now. And I think that's the way the, the stream is going to go today. You know, listening to everybody talk about now that what we know and you, everybody's already brought up the points about there. Some people are going to be, uh, you know, I'm not buying it because of this. And some people I'm not buying it because it doesn't have this or has this or whatever. And we get through that for the next couple of days and then we can settle in and just enjoy the camera for what it is. And I'll be on to new rants. <laughs> but uh <laughs> Simon, I, I can't believe we're finally here. It seems like it's taken forever, uh, and it has, you know, 18 months or more. But, uh, you know, thank you for being the person that you are. And I always uh, talk about the fact that you are the one-stop shop for all news, all cameras, all brands. And I, I like that you're not biased. I know that you're a, shoot, a Canon shooter, and that's fine. And, uh, you know, I, I'm putting something together, too, uh, a multi-channel photography community and where those that want to uh you know be a part of that i think it will be great you can come and, and these are channels that don't bash other brands or anything else whether you're canon centric sony centric nikon centric video centric uh but it, it's just a safe place to land in in the channels that want to adopt that whole uh idea or philosophy of let's just be photographers we can even do that online believe it or not and somebody had brought up i think you brought it up uh, kevin that we could all meet together even the haters everybody together and all of a sudden everybody's friends it's funny how that works 
But yet on the Internet, we all seem to want to fight with each other over so many things. And, and I'm not going to change the world, but I, I'm, I'm going to try to put this uh, philosophy together. A multi-channel uh, photographer community, whatever brand. So, And I think you bring that in the news, and I really appreciate it. I know I'm rambling on right now because I got to go eat five. something. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Rant number five. I, and I think I'm going to bail out with this. Uh, Simon, thank you so much for having me. I didn't know what you wanted me here for. I am not the tech and stats guy. I, I leave that to you and others. And uh, I just I just enjoy the community and enjoy actually shooting when I do shoot. So, oh, Chuck, it's all about eye candy with you. You're you're the honeypot. You pull it. Yeah, yours. yeah. Oh, yeah, I am not. <laughs> Chuck, thank you very much. Uh, it's always good to have you here. Just soothing. Yeah. You've got a radio voice and a face for television. Well, I would disagree with both, but thank you very much. <laughs> Cheers, my friend. All right, guys, I'm going to move right, us Chuck. over to a different scene I prepared since Chuck is leaving. And you can see our faces a little bit bigger. Uh, this might take a little bit of getting used to here. No, that's not the one. This, here we go. So I'm going to have to reassign James to guest one. And then Gaines, James, Gaines, James will magically appear in guest one. Actually, you know what? I'm going to switch your positions because I think uh, optically it's going to look better. Let's try that again. So I want to assign you to guest one and then James to guest two. There we go. It's just the coloring. You know, you got that bright color. We'll put you in the middle. Oh, I am stoked. I, you know, look, we, we've, <laughs> I'm not trying to get to 40,000. That's not the point. 43 subscribers, it's not going to happen in this stream. But normally, if I do a and a stream, we're going to pull in maybe 70 to 150. And with 300 here, folks, there's still a lot of interest for conversations. Please subscribe to Kevin Nordstrom and to James Jackson Films. Uh, so we're seeing a lot of our regular subscribers here. Um, yep, Wayne, thank you very much for joining us. It was fun to have you here. Um, so what price does the Z8 have? Who, who, who remembers the pricing in all countries? Oh, uh, I didn't know. Simon, you didn't say we were going to have a quiz. I, you... <laughs> 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 hold on. We, 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 need, we need to talk about Come this. On, I didn't know you, the yeah. on okay, hold on. I'll just... <laughs> Nobody studied. It ain't nobody studies for this. My, my evil. It's precious. Dr. Evil. See? Okay, so I took the attention. Okay, what's the U.S. price? Uh, $39.96.9 well, for, for, $39.96.95, I believe. Uh, uh, $39.99. Canadian. What's the Canadian price? Anybody remember? No? No clue. 53.99.99. Australian dollars, I believe, is 69. My wife said if I have the dog in the channel, I'm going to get a lot of subscribers and views. I said, yeah, it there doesn't work that way. This is a camera <laughs> channel. Oh, Sean, uh, what have you done? Look, Sean. Thank you, Sean. Here, I got to do a shout out to Sean here. He just gave us a super chat. Um, I've got to wait. I love this about Ecamm now. When you get super chats, it lets you know right in the screen, which is terrific. Good job, Ecamm company out of Boston. Sean says, thanks for all your hard work, giving us frequent updates. I absolutely love your channel. Well, I appreciate that, Sean. Every now and then I get a few comments saying, oh my God, you're publishing too many videos, to which I usually respond, would CNN, Fox, BBC, you name your news channel, do they just release one news video a day or do they just keep going? And that's my view because I also know at 40,000 subscribers, um, every time I put out a video, about 60% of those watching are new subscribers. So it's about informing, and that's what I try to do. I'm, I'm not an influencer. I shy away from that. You'll notice I don't yet have one of those intros for a VPN service or that, I forgot what they call a website. Everybody does it. It's 45 seconds long, and I just can't do that. I could probably double the amount of income I make off YouTube, but... I think it gets in the way, and I don't want to be an influencer. I have no problem saying I love Angel Bird. I stand behind Angel Bird because I use them, not because I'm a paid ambassador. And well, you're I'm not. not. You're, you're also. You're also not. You're also not like biased towards one 
camera brand either so and i think that makes you unique because a lot of the you know uh other channels out there will be dedicated to just one brand and like you know you cover all of them and uh i think that's important for everybody to realize who comes to your channel is that you know you're 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 laying out the facts you're laying out the, and rumors uh from all camera brands and uh not just you know one so squarespace that's it yeah and that's a good point and what i try to do is approach it from the viewpoint of somebody who loves camera technology. I, I think right, that's in, right. important. Can I, uh, yeah, can I open up a question regarding uh, to your, to this? I, and I agree, that's one of the different things uh, about you, Simon, because there's a lot of people that just focus in this or buy stores on camera. But I guess a question we, is uh, just, and this is a conversation, is it, is it, is that in terms of YouTube? Because I would love to see a little bit more dynamic with YouTube in our in our space as well but is it possible just the fact that there's just people that that been in that system they know that system well that and also there's also budget restraints that it's easier for them to talk about a system that they're fully in tune with versus a camera or a system that they don't truly know and they may may not necessarily yeah. fully have the access to go with well it does take some courage uh, I'll admit that I have no problems making a fool of myself. Um, I have no problems making mistakes and taking risks because if you don't, if you're not pushing the edge, if you're not making mistakes, you're not trying hard enough. And I, look, I, I, I love Jordan and Chris because, well, Jordan, he's got that similar sense of humor that I do. And uh, they give me a different perspective and they seem down to earth. And look at how many times Jordan has showed up on this channel. Uh, everybody was talking about Petapixel and DP Review shutting down, I was the only one to actually have them on the channel talking live about what was going on because I wanted to bring that personal aspect. I look at Tony Northrup and his wife and what they do, and they have a different space and what they do. And what I try to be in everything I do is honest to myself, but also honest to you. I have a, a senior position as an enterprise architect uh, at a rather large corporation. And you know, my reputation matters to me. And so I don't want to act like a clown. I don't mind not playing it serious because I do that at work too. If I've got a chance to drop a joke or a, a funny comment, I'll do so. But I, I, my reputation matters to me. And I've now got over 7.7 .7 million views. Hundreds of thousands of people have seen my face. The last thing I want people to think of me is just, you know, there's that idiot, right? So I, I do try to carry a certain air about myself. And I think honesty and transparency matters. And I know I could have more views if I did a few more things, but I've got to do it my way, as Mary Tyler Moore used to say, right? And so thank you guys for all those words. So I want to go back and take a look at some of the comments, guys. And if you want to pick your favorite comments and questions, let's do a bit of a round table. And I'm glad to see that John Young completely agrees. Not sure who he's completely agreeing with, but that's awesome. Um, I'll go ahead and pick the first question. And let's see here. Everyone's talking pricing. So um, Centra, Central asks, is removal of the mechanical shutter a big deal? And yes and no. Um, so one thing that Chris from Nikon Canada said is that by removing the shutter, they were able to lower the operating temperature because the mechanical shutter needs a certain temperature to operate properly. So there's, there's, there's that benefit as well. Um, yes, you can have some sort of rolling shutter issues, but you've got that stacked sensor, which helps reduce that risk. So a stacked sensor is able to process a whole lot more information quicker. It also has the benefits of low light performance as well as better dynamic range. So you've got all that working together and that um, will really, really help in that regard into the mechanical shutter. And we haven't heard people saying that the Nikon Z9 was terrible, the rolling shutter is terrible. So if it works for the Z9, same image, same image processor, same sensor. Um, I, I, I wouldn't worry. And if you are concerned, like I said in the previous videos, pre-order, go look at the videos, look at the videos of the Z9, check into it. And if you're comfortable with the answer, then go ahead and make your purchase. If you're not, do more research and you can always cancel that pre-order um, before it ships May the 25th, two weeks away. This is exciting stuff. Who wants to go? I'm just going to assign it to James because I know you two are going to argue over each other again. Hey, hey, well, no, hey, Simon, I actually have to get going. I have to okay. run some errands. Kevin, thank you very um, much for joining so us. You've been was, with was, us for two and a half hours. 
I know. It's been fun. I mean, and like, uh, it's it's exciting to see, you know, the 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 Z8 finally finally it's here and the wait is over and you know it's going to get into the hands of the right people and and it's obviously there's going to be some people that is it's just not right for and that's perfectly fine. I think it's ridiculous to sit here and say that there's going to be a perfect camera. You know what I mean? If there was a perfect camera, then. Uh, you know, we would all be going for that one camera, right? So, well, camera conspiracies um, would be out of business. Just, just, just like, just like, would, of... just like I said, per, the, per, searching for like a perfect camera is going to be the same thing as a perfect car. It won't exist because people, all of a sudden, all the camera manufacturers will go out of business. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> there, needs something, exactly. There, needs to be, there, there needs to be something new to be pursuit of. Otherwise, there, what's the point of upgrading? But no, Kevin, right. it was it was a pleasure meeting you, man, and I'm glad I got a chance to sit down and you know get engaged with you in these conversations, man. Oh no, no, no problem, man. I really I would like that's what we're that's what the live streams are for, man. I, I really appreciate it, and uh, everybody in the chat, it's been really cool to watch your guys' comments and your guys' opinions as well on the on the camera and uh, just photography in general as a community as a whole. So. Um, shameless plug here really quick. If you don't mind, if you guys are, you know, anybody who likes nature and wildlife photography, uh, I have a YouTube channel and, uh, I just go out and kind of have, it's not so much gear related as, you know, tech, you know, and stuff like that. It's more about like tips on nature and wildlife. And then just the adventure of just taking my camera out and bringing you guys along with me, uh, and sharing my photos and my experiences with you guys. So if you guys like that kind of a thing, you know, give me a follow. And also, um, uh, Simon, uh, have you hit the 40 yet or no? Oh, uh, let's see here. It, it'll be today. That's for sure. Probably. I'm at, I'm 44 away. 44 away. Let's, yeah, you're let's smash yeah, the like button guys. Ahead. Come on, let's do it. I was really hoping <laughs> to do it here. And then just to say, Hey, you know, thank you guys. This is a reflection of your participation more so than my contribution. So it's, it's oh, a community, sure. right? Yeah, one hundred percent. That's what it's all about. But like, uh, I gotta get going though. But uh, it was nice talking to you guys and everybody in the chat. It's always a always a pleasure. And uh, I'll see you guys around in the next one. Wonderful. Looking forward to it. Thanks for joining us, Kevin. Yep. Thank you. Take care, man. Well, it's you and me, my friend. What What's your cap? When do you need to get going? Um, I'm I'm probably gonna have to head out soon too. Um, I got quite a few appointments and then I got a shoot in the afternoon that I got to get prepared for. But, um, but man, uh, let's try, I'm trying to scroll through right now to see if there's any other questions. Cause I want to make sure that we could try to get, uh, there was some about the price. I it asked if it had the same sensor cover. I'm assuming it's, uh, it's the Z nine. I don't think that we ever got a chance to ask Chris that. So we'll find out soon enough. That is correct. We didn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and end things gracefully instead of just bleeding off into oblivion. Um, James, thank you for showing up. For everybody else who appeared on the channel today, and a special thanks to Nikon Canada for attending as well. Uh, thank you so much. And for you at home watching here, thank you for the super chats. Thank you for those. Who oh, can I just, I'll, sorry, go ahead. And I was going to finish, but I just wanted to just make sure to just, I'll, I'll to if anybody was interested in filmmaking and uh, learning more of filmmaking tips and tricks, you know, I definitely have my channel. I do film re reviews as well on my video channel. Uh, but if you guys are interested in looking at it from all these cameras from a filmmaker's perspective or learning other filmmaking tools that can help you improve, definitely head over to my channel as well. Yes, and I, I concur too. I hope you guys do uh, subscribe to James as well as everybody else who attended. Uh, but yeah, again, thank you very much. My plan is to do live streams whenever there's a major camera release. I will take the day off as I did today. I take the day off and I'll cover it. If it's at midnight, I'll cover it. My goal is to come in one hour before the presentation where we talk about all the latest rumors, latest specifications, latest leaked images. We cover the live stream directly. And next time I'm going to worry, work about work on having the audio pass through as well, and then have some guests with hands on. And I think that's probably the best way to kind of transition from what I do, which is cover news and rumors, to the actual people with the hands on. So everyone, thank you so much for participating. Thank you so much for joining us today. Have yourself a great day and just two weeks and you'll have the Nikon Z8 in your hands. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you again soon. Take care, everyone.